Morning, everyone. Good morning. We're still waiting for a few more people to join us, so we'll start in uh, five minutes. Thank you.
Morning, everyone. This meeting is now called to order. Uh, before I give my opening statement, let me uh, direct the committee secretary to acknowledge our resource persons for this morning. Thank you, Senator. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our uh, public hearing for Senate Resolution Number 759 and Senate Resolution 628. We'd like to acknowledge the presence of our distinguished guests and resource persons, starting with ASEC Jonathan Uy, the Assistant Secretary, the National Development Office 2 of the NEDA, with ASEC Roderick M. Planta also, from the NEDA also. Uh, the DOF is represented by Ms. Hannah Ginto, the Executive Assistant Office of the Secretary. Uh, also with us is ASEC Maria Edita Tan, uh, and from the BSP, we have Ms. Wilhelmina Manyalak, the Assistant Governor for International Monetary Affairs and Surveillance Subsector. BPWH is represented by Director Alex Bote from the Public-Private Partnership Service of the BPWH. Uh, Attorney Vivencio B. Dizon is representing the BCDA, and Mr. Ferdinand Pexon is the uh, is from the Public-Private Partnership. Dole is represented by ASIC Georgie Aragon and Director Dominic Tutay from the Bureau of Local Employment. TESDA is uh, represented by Attorney Arthur. J. Henota, Attorney 3, Legal Division of TESDA. Uh, Ibon Foundation is represented by Ms. Rosario Bella Guzman. And for the Foundation of Economic Freedom, we have Mr. Alan Ortiz, a fellow from the Foundation of Economic Freedom. That's all, Mr. Senator. Thank you, Comsec. Good morning and welcome to the uh, public hearing of the Committee on Economic Affairs on Senate Resolution. 759 and 628. We are conducting this inquiry in aid of legislation on two related resolutions directing us to look into the status, sustainability, and risk of projects under the Build, Build, Build program, as well as the complete terms and conditions of the loans entered into by the government to fund the program. The Philippine Development Plan 2017 and to 2022 has set the government's goal to increase infrastructure spending from 5.32% of GDP in 2017 to 745 of GDP in 2022. Through the Build, Build, Build program, the current administration dreams to usher the country into the golden age of infrastructure while increasing the productivity capacity of the economy, creating jobs, increasing incomes, and strengthening investment climate towards sustainable and inclusive economic growth. 75 projects have been selected out of the thousands of projects listed under the public investment program to, com to comprise the infrastructure flagship projects of the Build, Build, Build. It is the purpose of this inquiry to update the public on the status of the flagship projects and to objectively examine the advantages and risk of the resources of, of uh, risk of the sources of financing. We hope to see that the principles of responsible lending and borrowing have been observed, not just to correct public perception, but to further strengthen our economic partnership with our development partners. Thank you and may today's discussion give us the reasons to build instead of erode our confidence in the Build, Build, Build initiative. Uh, with that, um, I would like to start off uh, with some updates on the Build, Build, Build program. Uh, it is the intention of this committee to, um, to know where we are in terms of this uh, much-anticipated um, infrastructure program of the government. Nakakalahati na tayo dito sa administration. And uh, this is actually the second hearing. We, in, we conducted the first hearing, uh, I think, in 2017. Uh, but at that time, uh, the Build, Build, Build program was still in its infancy stage. But since we are already halfway through this um, administration, we would like to hear some updates. We'd like to hear also uh, the process on selecting the uh, much-anticipated 75 flagship projects, and also the process no, on 
uh, evaluating the project itself and evaluating the loans that uh, come with uh, the financing aspect. Uh, with that, we will start off with uh, the NEDA, who, has, uh, who is the Secretariat of the um, Investment Coordinating Council, and we recognize ASEC Jonathan uh, Uy uh, for his uh, updates. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, on behalf of uh, NEDA Secretary Ernie Pernia, we welcome this opportunity to again discuss with the Senate and the public the status of the uh, infrastructure flagship pro uh, projects. As mentioned by, the ch by Your Honor, uh, last year, the initial report based on June 2017 of the projects for uh, NEDA Board uh, and uh, NEDA Board approval and to the Investment Coordination Committee, we are pleased to report that of the uh, 18 projects that have been approved last year, now we have moved up to 37 through the NEDA board. So 37 out of the 75 projects as of January 2019 have now been approved by the NEDA board, of which 14 are identified to be completed by 2022. Uh, of the remainder 23 so far approved by the NEDA board, this will be, they are expected to be completed beyond 20 to 2022, but the imperative is to start these projects within this period. Uh, from the last status report of about 50 projects for ICC NEDA board approval, we have reduced this to 29. So we have been able to graduate much faster compared to past uh, plan periods with regard to processing these projects. However, we still have to review about nine in terms of the need for NEDA board approval as the uh, uh, infrastructure flagship projects are still being uh, refined in terms of uh, uh, cost estimates and scope as we particularly move through the preparation, development, and implementation process. On that note, Mr. Chair, may I also add additional information on the status of implementation. Of the 75 projects that have been identified under infrastructure flagship pro program, we have now 46 projects in implementation in various stages of implementation modes. Of the 46, uh, 16 are in the process of budgeting and financing. These are essentially now being moved forward through the appropriation process. And also in particular with the possible financing from uh, development partners. We now have nine, uh, 19 projects of the 46 under detailed engineering and procurement, while 11 are now technically considered to be on, uh, uh, in, uh, uh, in construction, of, of which ongoing are nine and completed two. We are currently developing, so that's 46 out of the 75, now current, uh, technically defined to be ongoing or under implementation. We are now developing uh, 24 projects, and for review, which we say, we, when we mean by for review, about five, which means to say that this may have to be revised in terms of project scope or project cost, or even be replaced by alternative projects. These are being reviewed in, a, uh, in point of fact because of uh, changes as far as the agencies or corporations approach to implementing these projects. Now. Uh, for the numbers, Mr. Chair, if I may continue, or do you have uh, any read like? So, just to go back to those two main points, for the net, the total amount of the infrastructure program is 1 trillion 857 billion pesos approximately, of which we now have approved about 1.564 bill uh, trillion pesos. And we are still processing about 600 billion pesos worth of projects. The, under the, the uh, status of implementation, we are now, in effect, implementing 1.563 trillion pesos. Of course, this will, this will cover, Your Honor, several fiscal periods as these are multi-year projects. And under development is about 528 billion pesos still to be looked. May we emphasize that these numbers, particularly when we talk about development, will move 
because the result of the development will be feasibility studies or preliminary engineering studies that will provide uh, better or, or more precise costings. No? In fact, uh, may I also emphasize that for the those that are undergoing uh, detailed engineering right now, which are 19, which costs about 600, uh, presently estimated to be about 640 billion pesos, we expect further changes because as a result of the detailed engineering. Just to give you an example, the Pangil Bay Bridge, is, which is part of the priority projects, based on DPWH detailed engineering, the need for further strengthening of the bridge because of the depth, the hydro hydrogeological aspects between uh, in Pangil Bay would require further widening and strengthening of the bridge. So these numbers actually are in the end, at the end of the day will be refined based on the further development in, t in terms of preliminary and detailed engineering. Uh, before you continue, uh, uh, Sec, let me recognize the presence of uh, Senator Binay. Go ahead, uh, Sec. Your Honors, uh, now with regard to the funding, just to complete, uh, this is the last point of our uh, uh, initial uh, discussion. Uh, regarding where we are on the IFPs, Mr. Chair. For funding, uh, at this time, as of uh, January 2019, we have identified about 1.98 trillion of the, uh, I'm sorry, I, I, have to, I have to correct myself, Mr. Chair. There was a, I was referring, in the total amount is 6 trillion pesos is the total estimated cost as of January 2019. I was talking only about the those that were for completion. I'm reading the wrong number. So it's 2.176 trillion. Uh, let me get back to that uh, number. Is the total estimate of the 75 IFPs as of uh, January 2019. Of that amount, about 1.983 trillion or about 56 projects are identified for possible ODA funding. The uh, about 11 or about 135 billion pesos are initially identified only for our own funding, meaning to say through the uh, government's own uh, revenues or own borrowing in, uh, in terms of G and what we technically call, call as GA or locally funded programs. There are seven projects under uh, modes of public-private participation, which is about 58.2 billion pesos, while there is one being uh, looked at as a possible private financing, purely for private financing. So uh, that's the all, Mr. Chair, at this point with regard to where we are in terms of approvals, implementation, and financing of the uh, flagship projects. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Asek. I was hoping that you will have uh a PowerPoint because it's very difficult to follow numbers without uh, the visuals. No? So, um, mahirap po, mas mabilis po kayo magsulat kaysa mag, uh, magsalita kaysa magsulat eh. So, Mr. Chair, can we just request for a copy? Yeah. Dun sa binabasa ni Asik. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, we will provide actually the uh, Senate Economic Planning Office uh, we had provided yes, yesterday, yes. but uh, it's the same. Yeah, I think you're looking at that table. Yes, right yes, now. yes. But uh, for, for the public, so for the public, yes, for Mr. the Chair, public's uh, information, it will be easier for them to follow if we have some visuals, no? Um, para maintindihan ho ng lahat kung nasaan na ho tayo. But uh, let me just go one by one. No? We have identified 75 flagship projects, no? Out of the multitude of projects submitted, correct? And itong 75 po, this is, how did we identify these 75 projects? No? Um, because I understand that the 75 projects were not uh, approved yet or are not approved yet by, um, by the NEDA board. No? But they were, the, my identification who yon. How did we identify yung 75? Well, thank you, Mr. Chair, for that question. Uh, we... The, when the administration came into place is uh, immediately after uh, constituting itself in terms of the, the economic managers, the first order of business that they had directed the, the agencies together with the NEDA Secretariat and the Department of Finance is to, do, to identify what would be the flagship projects for this build, build, build program or infrastructure program. Basically, almost all of these 75 projects are what we would call the 
in terms of two considerations, priority projects because of existing master plans. In fact, we're not talking of new projects. We have been developing these projects for a long time, even beyond before the last administration and even before that. So the, the first uh, criteria or criterion is if they are within the master plans, uh, existing or being updated at that time in, gen in the first, uh, the latter half of 2016. The second consideration, which was the most important one, was whether in fact these projects are ready to go because the commitment of the administration was to hit the ground running in terms of the projects. So the, uh, because of the master planning and the pre-investment studies or initially undertaken for these 75 projects, basically these were also prioritized. Let me point out that this came also from the agencies. These were not just called from a single department. Uh, all the departments involved, the Department of Transportation, Department of Public Works, Department, uh, the MWSS, the BCDA, this essentially came from their respective investment plans. Yes, Mr. Chair. Yes, Mr. Chair. Sigur, out of the 75, who ba? Meron ba who dito na was already started by the previous government? Mga ilan who out of the 75? Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, in fact, uh, le well, we'll have to get to you about the which projects have already been started. But for example, just to uh, uh, from the back of uh, what we understand, for example, the Plaridel Bypass Road. This was approved during the, pra the last administration, uh, proposed under public-private partnership. It was found out in terms of the validation by the public works that in effect, because the Plaridel Bypass Road has already been started even before the last administration, particularly through JICA funding, that the remaining approach of going through PPP would be best undertaken by our own implementation. So uh, Public Works actually just extended the implementation under the government. And then the, uh, the and further in coordination with JICA, asked, uh, requ we requested for additional financing. So that's one example for Public Works. The other example that we can give is also those uh, regional airports that have been identified like Lagindingan, uh, Bohol, uh, initially also identified under PPP, but for example, Bohol, we had already started under, uh, with incorporation with JICA in terms of building up the airport, the new Panglao Airport. And the decision at this point by the administration, by the economic <coughs> managers in particular, together with the OTR, is that the best approach to having public-private participation is through the O&M concept. So what they call the hybrid, we build it first, then let's see the private sector coming in. So actually, we're still using all of those modes, uh, our own funding or implementation uh, through ODA and through PPP. But these projects, in answer to your question, uh, Your Honor, as I've said, all of these projects have been ident identified even way before this administration came into uh, its present uh, governance. So, uh, ASEC, uh, those projects were identified in, in the past, then it will now pass through ICC and then NEDA board, yes. correct? And uh, the, the, the responsibility now of ICC and NEDA board is to evaluate the economic benefits of those projects. Tama po ba? No? Uh, can you use the mic po? Yes, yes, Your Honor. Actually, you're correct. The, the infrastructure program which was adopted by the administration in the uh, second half of 2016 is essentially just a list of uh, identified projects. But each one will go through the uh, uh, particular review. So meaning the 75 is not written in stone? Yes, Mr. Chair, that's actually, co that's correct. So if, for example, ICC and EDA will now find out that uh, the projects have minimal or zero economic benefits, tanggal sila sa 75? Yes, Mr. Chair, that is possible. Okay. Is financing part of the evaluation of the economic uh, uh, benefits? When you evaluate the project, no? the evaluate yung project, titignan nyo kung ano yung uh, benefits sa uh, society. Kasama na ho doon yung financing? Uh, based, well, to, to be 
uh, technically precise, the only thing that we review under the NEDA Secretariat is the project. The financing is a secondary consideration. At the end of the day, a project should be a priority and should be viable and justifiable before we even talk about its financing. Nonetheless, during the process of appraisal by the NEDA and in coordination with the agencies and the Department of Finance, uh, financing is being identified also. But the consideration there with regard to financing is first and foremost, as I mentioned, whether it's better for us to do ourselves or with development partners through ODA or through public-private arrangements. So the identification of financing as far as uh, let's say ODA is concerned is also to consider the comparative advantage in terms, in terms of technological and cost and expertise of a particular source country. As a Kanina, you mentioned that there are 37 projects already approved by NEDA board. And I'm sup I suppose that this passed through the rigid uh, evaluation process of ICC and NEDA. And all of them have tremendous economic gains. Yes, correct? Yes, 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 yes. That's correct, Mr. Chair. Madam, can you demonstrate to us that, that methodology and also the economic gains? At least one project lang out of the 37. Uh, for the... Uh, uh, knowledge of this committee, we want to understand, for example, kung ano yung, uh, you know, one of the 37 projects na evaluate nyo, ano yung economic benefit, benefits, ano yung societal benefits, you know, how will our economy grow, therefore, we have to pursue this project. I, I'm assuming that is the, I mean, in, a, in, in, in layman's terms, no, yun yung uh, output nitong uh, evaluation in you know so uh, please demonstrate to us no? one project lang no? okay mr chair siguro baka as a key can cite a project na baka na groundbreaking na or nag may mo assigning or whatever oh thank you mr uh, thank you your honors uh, first off for example the uh iloilo international airport project which have already been started, in fact, even be in the last administration. The continuing effort, uh, the administration, uh, we would like to credit the administration to continue that legacy project because the Iloilo Airport is necessary as far as the Western Visayas uh, hub is concerned. No? And in, in reviewing the project, this was validated uh, prima first and foremost as a PPP project. No? But Mr. We are Chair, siguro, um, and who you, what does this, this project entail? Kasi it alam naman naman natin na nakatayo na yung Iloilo Airport. So ano, is this an expansion or building of another uh, runway? Uh, the Iloilo Airport is to upgrade its status to a fully operational international airport. And basically will provide uh, enhanced safety and security access uh, with regard to passenger ca and cargo movement. Because essentially it was just a regional hub. So, ano ho additional terminal, uh, building of a new terminal? Expansion of the terminal okay. in terms to also to cover international uh, carriers. And how much po was, is this project? Well, uh, based on the funding that we have right now through approved for it, we have about 30.4 billion pesos uh, estimated for this project. As like what you're mentioning earlier are all uh, qualitative outputs, no? Uh, maraming pasahero, magiging international. But I'm sure meron kayong yes, uh, some form of uh, uh, grading system, no? Or some form of uh, quantitative analysis. Yes, no? yes, Your Honor. Yeah. As of, of course, alam natin, airport maganda, no? Ma ma maganda yung, you know, people uh, for tourism and all yes. that. But uh, ano Yes, Your Honor. Correct, uh, sir. Actually, the, to complete the point about Bo Ilo 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 International Airport, the project in terms of economic internal rate of return, in terms of valuing the travel time savings, the uh, uh, air transport movement benefits, the estimated economic internal rate of return is about 24.3%. Uh, when this was approved, the hurdle rate at that time in the last administration, which was particularly in 2014, was 15%. The ERR is 24.8%. Just as a, just to give a general point about this, we we evaluate or appraise projects in terms of economic viability against the so social discount rate of the Philippines, which we are now estimating to be about 10%. Uh, all things being equal, that is that if a project 
is economically has an economic internal rate, rate of return of at least 10 percent it's a good project in simple terms kung mas mataas siya sa 10 percent yes. pasado siya oh uh, no. the, the, the gain the, the economic gain of doing this project against its economic cost of implementation is higher okay uh, all of those uh, projects uh, are evaluated on the same manner yes mr chair uh, let me get to another, a more recent project, um, a, a new project. Uh, let me just refer to my. I, I'm looking for the subway project, Mr. Chair. Just uh, bear with me for a while. Uh, I'm getting the... Uh, uh, okay. The Metro Manila subway project, which was uh, finalized under this administration, and is now... Uh, we had just... Uh, Secretary Togadi of the OTR just had a groundbreaking on February 27. The project involves the building up of a 25.3 kilometer subway running from Mindanao Avenue up to uh, FTI in Taguig and also Ninoy Aquino Airport. So there will be a split or a loop. The project is, uh, costs uh, about uh, the first phase being reviewed uh, under processing is 356 uh, billion pesos and the economic internal rate of return based on the current uh, feasibility study is 10.3 percent or in we put it in absolute value the net present value which means say the economic value minus the economic benefit over the period of, of its uh, useful life is estimated to be was estimated to be 1.79 billion pesos so that's the latest that we can give you as a, uh, one that is uh, based on past approvals and now with the most current one. We will provide you, Your Honor, the details of this, uh, what I'm Actually, my, my next question, um, I understand now the process, uh, ASEC, but all, are these all of, are these published in your website? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, we put it up in the uh, ASANA uh, piece. Noong weekend, nag, nag search, nag -search ako sa website, di ko humaanap eh. Okay. Uh, basically, yes, uh, we we recognize that uh, looking into the website of NEDA needs, in fact, a little advice also on how to get through it. But uh, this, yeah, this table. Yes, I wanted to, to understand uh, the economic returns of these projects, no? Because, uh, of course, we're excited with all of these projects. But the question is, are these projects, in fact, beneficial to society or not? No. And um, uh, quant no. Qualitatively, maganda siya, excited kami sa subway, but is this going to be an economic gain for us? No? And we wanted to evaluate that uh, actually for the purposes of this hearing, but uh, over the weekend, nag-search ako personally, hindi ko siya makita sa website ho ninyo. So in the spirit of transparency, and especially uh, these are big ticket items, we're talking about close to... 400 billion pesos in ODA loans. No? ODA is, is utang, in short. No? In layman terms, babayaran din natin lahat ito. So we wanted to uh, uh, fully understand, and also for the economists out, in the, um, out, out, out there, to understand the, uh, the, the methodology that came with the evaluation. No? So um, I would like to urge you to immediately put it up in your website. No? Wala naman siguro confidential dito no these are all we, well we, we will take the uh, your honor's instruction and put it up immediately this is actually ready for for uploading correct correct so everyone can really uh, evaluate the projects itself no yes um, sure at the uh, yung financing kanina you mentioned the uh, uh, that there are 56 projects for ODA financing no and then, uh, ano yung iba? 56, and then, uh, hindi ko na. Ele 11 for our own implementation or funding. GAA. GAA. 
Okay. Entirely GAA or okay. locally funded. And then the others? About seven uh, being identified for possible public-private partnerships. PPP. Okay. PPPs. Okay. And then, how, paano ho napili itong mas marami ODA, mas marami GAA? I just want to understand the process. No? Uh, bakit ho hindi PPP? Um, what 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 uh, was the thinking uh, uh, process in identifying 56 for ODA and the others for GAA and PPP? Okay, thank you, thank you, Your Honor, for that question. The with regard to how these projects are identified, let me start. Let me start with the Your Honor with the GAA. Basically, GAA projects are. Uh, projects we've identified that uh, there is actually uh, technology available in the Philippines. The expertise is also available in the Philippines. And uh, in particular, we would, uh, we would consider that the certain urgency, because we are more in control of the funding of the project in terms of procurement, implementation. So these are the main considerations, ex uh, existing technology, availability of technology, expertise, and also re uh, some control with regard to not having to discuss further funding, taking time to fund. That's the other point about the ODA. And when we go to ODA, the main consideration is essentially, primarily, first and foremost, there is a comparative advantage being seen in getting the support of a particular development partner for example, in the case of the subway project, Japanese technology uh, in terms of uh, bo tunnel boring and the like. Uh, and then the second consideration for ODA is uh, affirmation of the requirement under the ODA law of 1996 that the financing should be ODA, should be concessional and should uh, and we defer to the Department of Finance in terms of uh, validating that uh, particular aspect of concessionality, the grant element, so to speak, which is, uh, as I recall, required to be at least 25%. Now, uh, so the other, th the other consideration is, uh, in particular, if uh, in the case of uh, the, and let me highlight uh, another consideration in the master planning, if there has already been an involvement of a particular development partner. In particular, we in, with the government of Japan, almost all of the traffic management plans in Metro Manila have emanated from master planning together with JICA. So they are familiar with the kumbaga, the economics and the technical aspects of uh, traffic management and road development in Metro Manila. So that's a third consideration. So just to uh, go back to it, Yes, thank you. Uh, yes, the, again, the comparative advantage of a development partner, an ODA partner, the uh, concessionality of the ODA financing that may be offered, and the track record of the implementing agency together with that development partner. Because we're talking about networks in this case, for example, like subways and roads. So those are the primary consideration. But there's a fourth consideration which is, may not necessarily be favorable going to ODA, their own uh, process of approvals. For example, the, in the case of uh, Japan, they follow a, an annual programming cycle, which is based on a March. April to March of, uh, from, let's say, the current fiscal period of Japan is now in the, we are in their 2018 fiscal period, which ends on in this month. So they would process projects on an annual basis. Sometimes the appraisal and, the, and funding considerations of, uh, for JICA would take uh, as much as two years. So there's also now the timing element that I was referring to that we compare, the agencies would think about whether in fact we can do it here ourselves much faster. But now with the administration, in fact, we have been able to come up with faster turnaround times with Japan, with Korea. And this is more in terms of the diplomatic and uh, technical discussions, particularly led by the Department of Finance with, this, uh, with, the, uh, with the counterpart uh, donors or ODA partners. So those are the uh, criteria that will now determine whether it's JA or uh, ODA financing. 
Uh, for the NEDA, uh, Your Honor, let me point out that at the end of the day, everything has to be appropriated, whether it is our own funding, mm. ad, either ODA or even under PPP, because we have to obligate our own counterpart. Mm. So the way we appra appraise the project, it's an, uh, uh, it's an all financing concept, mm. meaning to say it, at the end of the day, either we use our revenues through for or our own borrowing, we compare the financing against the financing uh, kumbaga parameters of the national government as determined by the Department of Finance. So it all comes into play in that consideration. So I said before we move on to the financing portion, no? uh, let me just summarize. For completion, is ilan projects po ang for completion? Uh, as of January... Oh, uh, sorry, for uh, 2022 completion. As of... As of January 2019, based on the current status of uh, development and implementation of the 75 projects, the agencies involved commit to about 28 projects. 28 projects. Pero may nakuha kaming uh, update from NEDA. Uh, as of November 20, as of November 2018, 31. So, so Actually, bumaba kasi the, there are three projects that are now coming back for further review. Uh, mm -hmm. One I uh, can say it is the Mindanao Rail okay. because of uh, alignment and uh, some technical considerations. Mm -hmm. uh, the Sorry, I was just looking for the DOTR representative whether they can validate the uh, statement. But the initial report to the NED by the DOTR is that uh, we have received reports that there are some concerns with regard to some affected communities with regard to the uh, current alignment. So therefore, we are expecting further revisions in the, in the alignment and, and also technical design. That's why I was saying at the outset, Mr. Chair, that these numbers move primarily because as we move forward in the development implementation, we get better and better uh, precision with regard to project cost, project scope, and also identifying uh, risks in implementation. 28 projects uh, as of today will finish by 2022. The agencies have committed to the administration that 28 will complete. This is about 319 billion pesos worth out of the 2.17 trillion. Mr. Chair? Yes, yes. Uh, yes Isaac, Honor. wait, can you name the other two na bumalik? Kaya naging 28. Your Honor, may we get back to you. My staff is, uh, our staff right now is checking on those three, uh, three other projects. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Then uh, beyond 2022, how many projects? Uh, right now, the uh, agencies have identified about 47 out of the 75 that will entail moving beyond 2022 okay. in terms of implementation, okay. completion. Yeah, and, and get back to us, Dunes, uh, request the Center Binay on the three projects that went back uh, to yes, the drawing board. Yes, Your Honor, we will provide the details of all these num I mean, uh, aggregate statistics that we gave you in okay. terms of project details, and we'll okay. also upload them. Okay, I, again, uh, ASEC, no, in the spirit of transparency, over the weekend, I painstakingly went through your website, no, para first hand kumalaman kung nandito ba itong mga ito, but I couldn't find all of this. Eh. These were all requested by our uh, Senate Planning Office and our office for all of these documents. And, uh, of course, we want the public to participate and to uh, be involved in the discussions of these flagship projects. And mahira po sa kanila, no? I mean, uh, an ordinary economist will have difficult time sending letters uh, and, and all that. So again, in the spirit of transparency, I would like to uh, urge you to upload all of this in your website and continuously to update all of us, no? Para alam rin ho ng Ng, ng taong bayan kung nasaan na tayo. All of us are excited, no? but, but uh, we need to scrutinize this and we want to encourage the public to scrutinize this as well. Actually, Your Honor, we are very happy for that instruction because now act we actually have monthly reporting through the Project Facilitation Monitoring and Innovation Group of the NEDA with the agencies. We will use your guidance to ensure that the agencies know that not only is the Senate uh, asking for the information, but we are required to upload it for everybody's uh, appreciation and for purposes of good governance. Uh, that's the ultimate intention. We're still working through the, yun nga lang, the how fast we can turn around in terms of uploading the information. Do you conduct public hearings? Out of the 
75 flagship projects. Meron ho bang public hearing na nagawa where you invited um, different um, sectors? Thank you, Your Honor. That's a very good question for us because part of the preparation of the project through the feasibility study is public and social consultation. In fact, uh, there are many stages in which the public and uh, in particular through social and environmental consultations are done. In the feasibility study, part of the uh, validation of the priority and the viability of the project is the conduct of uh, uh, focus group discussion, social uh, preparation discussions through the regional development councils or the local development councils. But most importantly, the uh, market surveys with in order to establish what we technically call the willingness to pay. Meaning to say, p are we, if particularly there will be tariffs to be set as part of the via financial viability and economic viability project, the feasibility study requires direct surveys pub with the public with regard to being asked, how much ca will you pay if we put up this kind of system? That's at the feasibility study. Let me just complete all of this, Mr. Uh, Your Honors. During the uh, appraisal process, it is also required that local and regional development councils endorse this project. This is part of the approval. Finally, during the implementation, in terms of the coverage for getting environmental clearance certificates from DNR, there is also again another round of social and public consultation. So. From identification, approval, up to even start of implementation through the ECC process, there is such consultation on a project basis. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you, ASEC. And uh, after approval, we go into financing, but I understand that uh, financing now is undertaken by the DOF, the correct? So in this case, the 56 projects identified for possible ODA financing will be turned over to the DOF. Uh, just to clarify, Mr. Chair, the ODA funding for the 56 involves both the already approved and still under development. As I mentioned earlier, uh, there are existing uh, cooperation or technical assistance where we include the development of the feasibility studies or master plans with an identified funding source. Uh, to put it very clearly, there is, particularly with regard to bilateral institutions like Japan, Korea, China, once it goes through the technical assistance for pre-investment studies under their grant system, this is a grant, no? Uh, technical cooperation. Uh, the next stage is actually moving forward to financing these projects after we have approved it and together with their appraisal and approval for their own funding. So. May combination ng uh, your honors. Uh, some degree of uh, identification in terms of both the preparation and the financing. Para bang magkadikit sila. Mr. Chair, uh, siguro just to make the picture clear. Um, pag kinuha ho ba natin yung grant from, for example, for China, from China, I think yung, yung tulay ho sa may binondo, may grant ho yan coming from China, di ba? For the feasibility, for the study, ko anong design ng bridge. Does that mean that China naren na magfi finance? Uh, your Honor, in, in your particular example, the Binondo uh, Pantalion, uh, no, 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 Binondo is a. Uh, Estrel. No. Binondo, no. Binondo Intramuros Bridge and the Australia Pantalion 2 bridges, these uh, are underground from China. We did the initial feasibility study. Now, for purposes of. Uh, appraisal by the Chinese government for grant, they refined the feasibility study with regard to, in particular, uh, appraising the cost of the project from their financing perspective under a grant. Uh, sorry, funding perspective under the grant. So, yung example nyo, tayo po yung gumawa, yung dalawang bridge. Tayo yung nag initially nag prepared ng project, but it was further provided assistance by the Chinese government in order to put it forward for possible Chinese grant funding. Ah, so parang humingi, parang they got involved kasi for further design or whatever. So automatic na huyan. Sila na rin ang tut gagawa ng tulay? Ganun ho ba yan? Or is it also possible na tayo, tayo na lang yung gagawa ng bridge based on their design? 
Uh, actually, uh, Your Honor, the, in this ca the case of these two bridges, the, uh, the what I understand uh, uh, progressed there was that these were projects for f implementation by public works by themselves, but the Chinese government, as a first instance of the new cooperation with, with the Philippine government, offered to provide a grant for both uh, undertaking a further feasibility study and the implementation of the project under a grant, a capital grant. So what you're trying to say, originally, huh, itong dalawang tulay na to was not, was supposed to be done by DPWH and As not uh, to be done under a grant from China. As I mentioned earlier, Your Honor, uh, all of these projects uh, uh, in the IFPs are based on existing plans for implementation by the concerned department. In the case of the two bridges, the Binondo uh, Intramuros and the Australia Pantalion, what happened there was that the Chinese government uh, offered to provide grant funding, of course. But the grant funding will be for the design. And including the implementation. Uh, including the implementation. So li technically, it's libre yon, kasi hindi siya ODA. Yes. Uh, for those the two examples uh, that you, men you mentioned, Your Honor, that's correct. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, for the DOF, no, it was mentioned that uh, there were 56 projects identified for possible ODA. Some of them are being, some of them are already approved. No, some of them are in the process of approval. Um, please give us a, uh, an update on these 56 projects, uh, ASEC. On what I have, okay. So the loan agreements that we have signed, I have right now nine. So some of them most likely would have been uh, implemented through either grants or through uh, what's this through GAA. But here I have here a um, list of, um, of projects uh, from the infrastructure flagship uh, list. Uh, there are about uh, nine of them. So we have for uh, for Japan, we have already executed. You're saying uh, we've already approved nine loan uh, agreements executed. executed yes. out of the 56. Yes. Um, I'm not so sure about the 56 that he's talking about. It could be a, a long time ago we've already executed some of them, but uh, during this administration, we've already signed nine. Okay. And what are the, we, we were breaking down the uh, We have the Chico River and the new Centennial Water Source, Kaliwa, uh, that's with China. Uh, for the Pasig Marikina River, um, and then we have uh, Cavite Industrial Area Flood Risk Management Project, Metro Manila Subway, North South Commuter Railway Extension Project, uh, Road Network Development, uh, that's not yet signed but um, negotiated. So those were all with JICA. The no road network has been negotiated uh, and is supposed to be um, executed soon when we have the budget approved. We're just waiting for the budget approval of the GAA for 2019. For, um, for the Koreans, we have already um, executed the, Pang, uh, the loan agreements for the Pangil Bay Bridge Project and the New Cebu International Container uh, Port. That's it. For the nine, uh, how many are from China? Two? Uh, two. Two projects are from China. Two projects are from the uh, Koreans. Koreans, and uh, a number of them are actually co with the Japanese. Five, five of them. Yes, are from JICA or Japan. Yes. Okay, and these are executed projects already. Uh, um, when I say executed, executed loan agreements, meaning executed we've already signed, so they're about to be implemented. Yeah. I was given this document by uh, Neda. No, it's an update actually on. Uh, the 35, it's called the 35 projects. And uh, some of them are, uh, like for example, itong uh, Subic, uh, I just want to test, no? Sure. Subic Clark Railway Project. Is that uh, an executed project? I'm not sure. Not, not in my list. Well, why is it in your list? NEDA board approved 35 yeah. projects. Yeah. Then 
wala pang ano, hindi pa uh, under processing pa ho. Siguro Mr. Chair, nine yung executed. Ilan yung um, pending or nasa pipeline pa? Oh. I mean, siguro out of the 37 approved, Seven, uh, where are we in terms of financing out of the 37 approved? Siguro yung minus nyo na yung nine na ex executed. Most likely, if it's up for uh, loan financing, then it should be uh, being processed right now. If it's all for ODA, no? If it has been approved by NEDA board, then usually what happens uh, after NEDA board approval, then we seek for uh, financing already. So um, either we're waiting for some internal approvals, like uh, for the completion of the NEDA board, then we, uh, we ap then approach the um, counterparty either any of the ODA partners for financing. So right now, we have done, we've only completed seven, but in the case of Japan, uh, the road network is about to be signed. We're also, for the, there are several others, uh, would say ADB. It's what is not included here is the ADB, I'm sorry. <coughs> uh, we failed to include the um, financing coming from the multilateral. Like in the case of ADB, we've already signed as well a financing agreement, uh, about to sign the financing agreement for the north-south commuter rail. So that is being um, uh, processed. Dito sa, NEDA provided this document to us, uh, I think, uh, last week. And uh, nakasulat ho dito, NEDA board approved 35 projects. And uh, I, I'll just select one of the... Sure. Uh, projects among the 35. There's the Subi Clark Railway project. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And nakasulat dito funding source China, China loan. Approved na ho to? Uh, it, it, we have not actually even started your, our discussions with China. We have actually parang very initial pa lang yung stage for that one. Pero nakasulat uh, rin dito status remarks. The Chinese side provided the short list of qualified Chinese companies. Yes. So, so um, what happens with the Chinese in process niya, uh, they actually start to provide first the three uh, contractors no, that are of good standing. I assume these are tied loans. Yes, yes. No? So uh, yeah. in other words, the, the, the lender will provide yes. uh, the supplier. Yes, okay. but we, uh, we go through a limited competitive bidding. But okay. in the case of the North, this um, no, uh, Subic Clark, no? I think we have a, um, in fact, uh, Vice President, uh, uh, President Vince here. Uh, but that one, uh, we're looking at a uh, turkey, turnkey kind of uh, approach. And so we are looking at amending the note verbal to allow that. No? Um, so but we're still but waiting in, for in that. In other words, it's a pa yung process. Niya. We're still. Um, mm -mm. I'm trying to understand. No? In, 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 in normal cases, you will have the loan, and then you select the 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 the, the, uh, the contractor. No? Yes. But in this case, kasi parang lumalabas, there's a contractor, yeah. but wala pa tayong source of financing. So how is it? How do you reconcile uh, okay. this? Okay. In the case of the Chinese, they first would want to uh, have a contract, or um, for us to go through a bidding process before they say, okay, I'm okay to confirm to finance it. That they, they would actually say, okay, these are the list. I, if we're able, parang sigurista sila, no? Uh, they would want first to be assured that you'll be getting a contractor that is of Chinese because they're funding it. Eh. So it's a tied. It's uh -oh. a tied loan like JICA. Uh -oh. Diba? You sign first the loan with JICA and then they they uh, provide the supplier, no? And yes. normally the suppliers are also Japanese. Yes, correct? but in this case, you go first through a bidding process uh, a limited compi uh, competitive. So, in other words, JICA and Chinese, iba yung proseso nila. Medyo baliktad sila ng konti. Uh -huh. Okay. But both are tied. Both yes. are tied, I yes, understand. Yes. And no. the other one, the ito lang sa Chinese is as of, can I ask? Uh, Mr. Chairman. Y yes, uh, Vince. Mr. Chairman, with the indulgence of Assistant Secretary Didit Tan, may we just, uh, I think, make the process very clear with respect to the official development assistance loans from China. The chairman is absolutely correct. The process is different between the, uh, the lending country, in this case China, versus other countries like 
Japan and say Korea. Now for the Japanese uh, ODA loans, the loan agreement is first signed before the tendering or bidding process takes place under a tied loan arrangement. For China, however, the process uh, between the government of China and the government of the Philippines uh, is slightly different in the sense that the bidding process comes before the loan agreement is actually negotiated and then signed. So in the case of China uh, and the Subiclark Railway project, this project uh, was approved by the NEDA board for um, funding through ODA from the PRC. Uh, after the approval of the NEDA board, the Chinese government will be giving the Republic of the Philippines a short list of three accredited uh, contractors under a tied loan arrangement. The Philippine government will then bid out the project uh, under our own rules. And uh, once the winning bidder has been uh, awarded, then the loan negotiations take place with the, between the uh, Chinese government and our Department of Finance. So uh, it is slightly different in that sense, but as Secretary, uh, Assistant Secretary Tan mentioned, this, both processes go through a very transparent tendering and bidding process. There is no direct negotiation in the process between the, in the selection of the Chinese contractor. Uh, question, uh, Asik Tan, China lang yung ganito. I mean, Korea, Japan would basically have the same process or even EDB. Ch sa China lang ba na may ganito na may nauna yung bidder bago dun sa um, na mapunta muna sa inyo? Yes. I'm, I'm just curious what was what's the rationale because I think pa paano niyo paano niyo paano niyo pag-uusapan yung amount and the terms kung meron na dun sa syempre when you do the bidding nakasaad na dun ko ano yung uh, terms of payment interest and whatever when hindi pa nga na approve ng DOF ko ano yung term so what do you bid out Ma sorry if i may po in the bidding process po uh the terms of the loan are not part of the terms of reference of the bid. It is only the budget of the uh, project that approved by the NEDA board that is, uh, that is the parameter uh, used in the bidding. Yeah, but and how would you know kung competitive, ano basis of competitiveness kung hindi pa nga ayos yung... Um, yung terms or yung, 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 yung amount? Uh, diba kasi parang hindi pa nga, wala pa nga coming from DOF, uh, pero dun sa ano, nagbibid out na kayo. When technically, di ba dapat in terms of reference dun sa bidding will come from DOF? Uh, hindi po. The, actually, the terms of reference uh, comes from the approval, is based on the approvals uh, of the NEDA board. No? So in the NEDA board, what is approved is the budget, uh, there is a budget ceiling, which we typically call in our, in our rules as the approved budget for the contract or the ABC, uh, and also the parameters of the, of the project, uh, which has all gone through the process of approval in NEDA. Um, so the, the project is bidded out using the budget as approved by NEDA, and it goes through competitive bidding Padabahan uh, po ng presyo. Typical, typical bidding process as we do it e even with locally funded projects. And then after the project has been awarded based on the winning bid or typically the lowest bid if it's a construction project, uh, then that uh, amount is what will be negotiated by the DOF in terms of terms of payment, uh, gano'n po kahaba yung tenure ng loan, yung interest, etc. Pero with this project, parang na-mention nyo ko na you're thinking of doing a, you're thinking of amending to turn key. Hmm. Yes. If, if I may po um, explain that, um, Madam Senator, the, 
there are projects po kasi that are uh, what they call turnkey projects. Essentially, the, what this means is um, the project is paid for uh, after the project has been completed and accepted by the implementing agency, say the uh, a railway project. Uh, typically, po, under um, local rules, under RA 9184, uh, contractors are paid on a progress billing, uh, under a progress billing s system, meaning every month the contractor bills the agency for X percent completion and uh, the corresponding percentage on the contract will be paid to the contractor. There are some projects, however, that are turnkey because they are typically design and build, meaning uh, the design and the civil works are in one contract, and these are typically projects that are settled upon completion and acceptance. Um, however, under our local rules, um, under 9184, we do not have the bidding documents and the procedures for such projects under 9184. So what we want to amend in the projects with uh, China and also other uh, uh, lender countries and agencies is to allow the Philippine government to use internationally accepted uh, bidding procedures and documents such as those used by the ADB or the World Bank uh, in order to facilitate the implementation of these projects. Because unfortunately, our local rules do not provide for uh, such a system of of uh, implementation and payment. So yun po yung sinasabi ma'am ni, ni uh, Assistant Secretary Tan for for some of the Chinese projects. Asak Uy, you're yeah. raising your hand. Actually, Your Honor, Senator Binay, uh, you mentioned basically that whether in fact uh, China is uh, unique in its... Uh, uh, in answer to your question, uh, based on our own validation of the approach by the different uh, sources, in in certain uh, bilateral partners, for example, China, Spain, France, Denmark, Italy, United Kingdom, Austria, Norway, Netherlands, and Finland, of, uh, but we may need to update this based on the current. Essentially, these are export-import credit. And primarily before the, the government provides a government-to-government -government arrangement, which makes it ODA, the, uh, their supplier will have to lock in first a, a, a supply contract that they will submit for concessional or uh, concessional financing, or how would we, we could technically call it uh, blended, blended export import finance with the concessional window of the country. This makes it a government-to-government. In fact, uh, we'd like to highlight that with the lead of the Department of Finance, we have been able to even upgrade the level of the China funding by having a limited procurement at the outset. In effect, uh, unlike in the case of, uh, let me, public, public works, but I understand Director Alex Bote does not handle this, but they have, in fact, in our pipeline right now, uh, funding from uh, Aust no, no, British right now, from Austrian to British, where there is a locked-in supplier in place for purposes of approving the project before they get their concessional funding from, in this case, UK. But in the case of China, as pointed out already by Asik Didithan of DOF, we have been able to negotiate a limited procurement by the Chinese side nominating three contractors, which the agencies are supposed to apply our procurement uh, <coughs> criteria for finding out which of these uh, uh, three suppliers can best uh, provide the service or inputs. Uh, let me point out that uh, this, in fact, is a, a, an improvement if compared to the, uh, the bilateral arrangements we had in the mid-2000, when the first Chinese loans were uh, provided uh, to the Philippines. Thank you, Asek. M Mr. Chairman, if I just may, may add yes, just very yes, quickly yes, uh, to uh, what... Uh, yes, Vince. Uh, ASEC, we just said, and also what ASEC did it done. I think what's important to note is that, uh, and ASEC, we pointed this out very clearly, is that unlike previous processes uh, that have been, previous projects uh, that were implemented under a government-to-government -government, uh, agreement with China, 
the process that is being used now is very transparent and it is very competitive. Now, there are no direct negotiations unlike those that were mentioned by... When, when you say process, Vince, this is the bidding process, yes. the selection of yes. the contractor. Yes. The yes. Yung pagpili ng contractor. And, the, and I think si uh, Asaktan mentioned uh, this is called a limited competi competitive bidding. Yes. Similar din po sa mga ibang tide loans with other countries such as Japan, Korea, and, and other um, lender countries and agencies. But I think the big difference now uh, is that the process is very transparent and it's very competitive. And also the... Um, it is the Chinese government that actually provides a list of accreditation, which, by the way, is also vetted by our implementing agencies. Meaning, um, pag nag-submit po ang China ng listahan, uh, hindi naman, hindi po automatic na tatanggapin po ng Philippine side yung mga kumpanyang yon. Ito po ay dumadaan pa po ng vetting. Uh, Chinecheck po kung blacklisted sila ng kahit anong uh, uh, international agency tulad ng World Bank. At kung meron pong um, uh, kumpanya na hindi, na hindi magiging kwalipikado based on our own criteria, vetting criteria, then the Philippine government can go back to the People's Republic of China and ask for the, the company to be in that list to be replaced. So it, it's very transparent and it goes through competitive bidding under our own uh, domestic laws, Mr. Chairman. This goes the same for the Koreans yeah. and the Japanese? Well, uh, Mr. Because the, the Japanese tied loan, rin yan, correct? Yes. Uh, well, so are they also mandated to submit three contractors? No, and the, then in the case of the Korean and, and Japan, uh, first, uh, first difference is that there has to be a loan agreement first in place before we do the procurement for the contractors or consultants. In the case of Japan, they are now, uh, with the exception, uh, well, uh, there, there, are two, there are two kinds. In general, there is general competitive, meaning say it's open to as many interested parties. Hindi lang, hindi lang three. For, for uh, the Japan loan? For the Japan loan. Whether in siyang local? Huwag nilang untied loan, Your Honors. For, for the normal... Uh, normal Japanese loan. Normally tied yan eh. I've never seen a Japanese Madam Mr. Chair, kailangan ho ba Japanese companies pero not tied to three? Ganun ho ba? Uh, in, in principle, it's open to all nationalities. But in practice, the, let me, well, I, I need to put this very clearly that in practice, the, kumbaga, the requirements let me put it in another way. For ADB, for example, you have to be part of their list. You know, in other words, meron kang, hindi naman open, competitive, your honors, to be very frank about it. Kasi may kailangan you have to qualify in their pool. So for ADB, ho, parang may pool of contractors. Yes. Ha? And then all of them can join. So yes, it's not limited correct, to your honor. And then for the Japanese, same Japan. so, ah, same. Din. Ganun so din meron silang Japan. pool of contractors. Meron silang qualified na, na, na sa entrance into the ano. And all of them can join the bidding. Yes, Your, your Honor. In fact, uh, sometimes it can happen that hindi nga, hindi nga Japanese firm, Korean firm ang nananalo sa Japanese yeah. assistant. But I, I have to check back again. And on so Korean, how was it the same process? Yes, also in the Korean. Uh, let's just to be complete on the Japanese, because there is what you call the untied, which is open. Open, meaning to say any country can participate okay. as long as they're qualified in their list. And there is sort of the tide, which is the 30% content, meaning to say it binds now, therefore, the supply content that it should come 30% coming from, uh, from Japan. This is the highly concessional, almost 0% concessional step loan, which we'd like to inform your honors that the Japanese government has already advised us that in the Philippines now graduating to an upper middle income country, we will not be avail we cannot avail any more of this tied loan in about three years time. Mr. Chairman, just to another point, no? um, not all Japanese loans are tied loans. Uh, some are untied. Just to give an example, and uh, maybe the PWH can confirm this, the Central Luzon Expressway that is currently being built is a Japanese loan, but it is an untied loan. In fact, Mr. Chairman, uh, doon nga po sa project na yon, may mga contractor nga pong nanalo, Chinese, eh, 
kahit na Japanese yung funding dahil untied uh, Chinese po yung nanalo dun sa dun sa Japanese pero untied loan po siya yung Central Luzon Expressway po yun so either way mas maganda pa din yung Japan or Korea because we're not tied to three contractors di ba I mean we're not limited to three in a sense right Ma'am, yung sa China naman po, hindi naman po limited to three. Uh, it's just in the past two projects that uh, have been implemented under Chinese ODA, the Chico River Flood Control and the Kaliwa Dam, uh, they submitted three. But we can actually submit more than three. It's really up to the uh, lending country. Yeah, pero kasi sa China, they submit the three. I like the Japan. It's open to whoever. If you're part of the pool of contractors ah. of Japan, you can bid out. Hindi katulad itong sa China. Ito na, ito na yung pagpipilian nyo, itong tatlo. Yeah. I, I think what the main difference po kasi with China is that the contractors that participate are state-owned enterprises. Well, I think that is the, the major difference. This is why the 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 central government of the People's Republic of China takes responsibility for its state-owned enterprises. That's why they're the ones that submit the accredited uh, list, ma'am. Unlike Japan, they are private enterprises, as well as Korea. Um. Uh, Asik Tan, uh, you mentioned earlier, no? I, I'll go back to you later, Vince. No, I have uh, some questions. Um, but Asik Tan, earlier you mentioned that there are two executed Chinese loans already. No? But in the list of NEDA, uh, there are already projects there, uh, namely uh, Subic Clark Railway Project, itong Ambal, Simuay River, and Rio Grande, the Mindanao River Control Project, Na ang status is uh, the Chinese government has yet to provide the short list of qualified contractors. No, the the loans are not executed, but the uh, Chinese side is already looking for contractors. So meaning, at one point in time, we will execute a loan with them, correct? So for all intents and purposes, this is a done deal. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Yes, so what will be uh, a deciding factor not to go with not to go with the Chinese loan? Kasi gumago, may effort na sila eh. Sabi nga ni Vince, transparent, mag, may tatlong contractor, transparent, magbibiding. So may effort na ito. At one point actually, in time, they will execute the loan. Uh, actually, no? Mr. Chair, di ba, parang mag effort yung Chinese counterpart to look for bidders and then all of a sudden, on our end, hindi natin itutuloy yung yung loan. If, like, if I add all of this, uh, itong nagahanap ng qualified contractors, lalabas there are about 19 projects, no? 19 projects that the Chinese government is already looking for contractors. So from two, <laughs> it will go up to 19. No? So, uh, ano bang magiging deciding factor not to go with the Chinese loan? Well, uh, at this point, based on the process as already uh, explained by ASEC Didiftan and uh, President Vince Dizon of DCDA, the primary driver will be the agreement of our implementing agency in the selection process, the, se the selection under the limited competitive select, uh, uh, procurement. Because at the end of the day, let me highlight now that uh, what sec uh, President Vince Dizon of DCDA mentioned. If as long as the agency, and in fact this happened in the MWSS project, that uh, the list of three was in fact changed further, in added further because one was not ma found acceptable. Unless it is, there is a, fine, a determination by the procurement review of those limited selection as offered by the Chinese side, we cannot move forward to a loan agreement because in effect the supply contract is, cannot be defined. By, the, by any Chinese company to satisfy. Let me point out that the, I think the, I don't know whether this was mentioned, the primary financing, uh, financing uh, mechanism of China is through the uh, ex Export Import Bank of China. So there in effect, the supplier has to be able to sell the, their uh, draft supply contract to their export import before it goes even to the MOFCOM for the concessional funding approach. Uh, Mr. Chair. Siguro, just to add to your question, 
Um, for example, nakapili na sila dun sa three, tapos mapupunta na ho sa DOF. Does this mean na okay na? Or pwede pa rin sabihin ng DOF, okay, we won't push through with the project. Yes. And after uh, they've already settled on the contractor, we look at the uh, terms. It has to be acceptable. And if it's not acceptable for DOF, pwede hindi matuloy yung project. Yes, we cannot execute unless it's acceptable. Uh, as a can make us understand. Let me respond to your last uh, last part of your what you said. Actually, the project can still continue, but we will not fin go with that funding if DOF cannot uh, finalize the terms and conditions. As I we pointed out, these are priority projects. And in fact, <laughs> this year, this is going to be a turnaround year in terms of establishing whether we are within still timelines in terms of what we had approved already relative to the availability of the financing. Go back to you, uh, K. Vince and K. Asak, dun sa sa selection of the contractor because that's a whole new different process no but now let's go i'm assuming that uh, uh, the other projects that are in the midst of uh, select selecting a chinese contractor or submission of three contractors will most likely go through the dof for p financing now mom let make us understand what is the process of selecting the best financing package for the Filipino people. How do we make us understand that DOF is indeed selecting the best loan package for us? We always uh, evaluate the terms, no? make sure it's really concessional. And that, uh, so even if you're, so you have to make sure it's concessional. We, uh, we didn't, parang we also would like to compare it. We usually would compare it with our cost of financing. Uh, had we borrowed it from commercial sources, it should be much, much cheaper than the commercial. To define concessional, no, para everyone will be on the same uh, page. The interest rate should be really lower than had we issued or borrowed from commercial sources. So, yeah, right now what we're doing is to compare it to our um, uh, the uh, ROP yield curve or the dollar yield, yield curve. In the case of the Chinese, since we're borrowing in dollars, we're comparing it to the dollar yield curve that we have. So the first is, uh, the first criterion is the interest rates. Yes. Okay. And, and the tenor. So it goes together. Okay. Yes. The interest rates is benchmark or it's uh, pitted against what uh, benchmark? Uh, for dollars, we compare it to the dollar yield curve that we have. So it's uh, out there, it's quite, uh, it's very liquid. So it's a very good benchmark. So in present terms, ano po ang dollar yield curve ngayon at this time? It's below 4% for the, even for the longest. That is the maturity is 25 years. Mm -hmm. So from um, 10 to 25 years, it's between 36 to 4%. So in other words, if you borrow um, in using the dollar yield, yield, yield curve, you will be paying 4% for a 25. 3.6, yeah, for uh, 25. close to 4%, about 3.6, uh, if I'm not mistaken right now. It's okay, so that uh, is the, my benchmark. the benchmark. No? And yes. this is uh, what you are using right now as yes. one of the criteria. Yes. Okay. Um, and then when you select the loan, uh, do you... Uh, what is the process, uh, ASEC? Do you compare? Yes, um, um, do you compare? Uh, no? Do you compare uh, per lender? How do you? How do well you we make us understand how yeah, what okay. is the process? So there is actually a program. You have to understand there is a programming. So you have to consider already upfront the terms that are being offered. But these terms actually they change, and our benchmark also ch it also changes, no? So you, you have to be monitoring all of those. So when you do the programming, you have to consider the factors of uh, comparative advantage of getting it from this source versus the others. And then also, there you, you have to consider the um, uh, availability or the headroom of the lenders because they cannot be, we cannot just be sourcing your funds from just one source. So you have to consider, uh, that would have to be considered. Uh, as well as, what else? Uh, so the comparative advantage, the concessionality would have to be considered. 
and the timeliness. Sometimes you have to consider this is an urgent uh, uh, requirement. And uh, a number of the ODA partners, they have a very long process. So, you, have, you know, if it's an urgent, I don't think you should be assigning it to someone who would not be able to respond to your requirements. But there is a, uh, some form of uh, comparison happening. And this is being decided upon by your, your group, the IFG. Yes, our group, and also this is actually uh, factored into during the discussions in the ICC. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, but the ICC only approves the economic benefits. Well, mm. let me qualify that the ICC, uh, in participation of the OF, being the chair of the ICC, will also add into the discussion their own findings with regard to the source, the identified or possible source of uh, ODA in terms of uh, these, those parameters that mentioned by ASEC did okay. well, we'll go back to that later on. Uh, so ASEC, all of this, uh, like, like what Neda demonstrated earlier, there is an economic rate of return. There is a quantitative measure. Is there a quantitative measure when you evaluate which loan package is beneficial? Yes. Um, uh, it, in fact, it's not even monthly, but almost on a weekly basis, we're looking at the, how the interest rates are moving because our benchmark is actually moving. If, uh, we're not limiting ourselves to the uh, uh, yung ODA Act, wherein it's uh, prescribed under that, that if you, the concessionality is based on that 10%, right? Here, we, we're very strict on ourselves. We're looking at even the benchmarks being the commercial, commercial source. If you were to source it uh, from uh, loans, commercial loans, or from by issuing bonds, then it should be really, really cheaper than that. So that's how we do it. And then uh, when we, so we look at, when we monitor, we monitor not just the ODA, the Chinese and the Japanese, we also monitor the World Bank and ADB because these are, uh, uh, most of them are LIBOR based. So since LIBOR has been moving, quite a bit. So we really need to monitor that as well. Uh, we also look into the grant element. Okay, Let, let's let's run some simulation ASEC, no? because uh, obviously uh, one of the most important uh, decision-making uh, element is the interest rates. No? Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's, it's a well-known fact that uh, uh, Japanese can offer almost near zero interest rates, no? as well as the Koreans. No? Yeah. Um, I think there's this talk right now that uh, uh, the Chinese loans are <laughs> between two to three percent. Two, two, two to three percent, correct? Yes. Yeah. Magkano po ang sa Chico. ADB? ADB is LIBOR plus uh, fifty. So magkano ho yan in uh, nominal terms right now? No? Let me see. Huh? At this current rate, magkano ang LIBOR? Magkano ang plus niya? Marami yan eh, plus plus pa yan eh. The equivalent of that would be at 3.44, no? So we borrow from ADB right now, today. It's LIBOR plus 50. So they will charge us how much? LIBOR plus 50. And then when you fix it to US dollar, in US dollar terms, mm -hmm. that is 3.44. 3.44. Yes. If we borrow today. No? Yes. How, so mu uh, yeah. how much is the World Bank? If we borrow today. Ah, okay. That is LIBOR plus 77 BIPs. Uh, that's uh, equivalent to a fixed rate of 3.71. 3.71. 71. Yeah. Okay. So, mas mahal sila. Yes. In other words. <laughs> yes. Okay. But uh, uh, the famous Japanese near zero rates, uh, magkano ngayon? Okay, that is, uh, there are so, there are different. You have under the step, it's 0.10%. No? Point one. Point ten percent, which is, yeah. So common sense will dictate that uh, we should go all the time with the Japanese, correct? I mean, uh, well, we ma uh, no. actually, so, so we, back we maximize it. Okay, so <laughs> what is the reason why we are going with other 
lenders uh, as opposed to just focusing on the we cheapest? We need to also, uh, we have to diversify. One is we have to diversify. You have the technology to consider. You have the currency to consider because uh, some of the currencies could be very volatile. You know? So you have to modeling mag uh, appreciate or depreciate. So those are the things as well. Currency risk. Yes. So Japanese is perceived to be um, a, a, uh, a currency risky uh, uh, denomination. At some point, yes. Okay. But uh, that's also considered the currency risk. No? Yeah. Um, all of this being discussed, uh, is there a. Um, some sort of a quantitative measure, no? For example, currency risk, risky siya. Um, interest rates, mas mahal siya. All of this, uh, you know, comparative advantage, although comparative is qualitative siya. But all of this, is there a measure that will help all of us understand how DOF selected a lender? There's no hard science, you know. It's mm. almost like an art, just like uh, any type of finance. If you go to treasury, it, it's an art because you need to read the market. Okay, that's one is you really need to read the market. And in the case of JICA and uh, the other ODA, we look at the terms. You really look at the terms and the comparative advantage. We look at some strategic uh, concerns as well like uh, best way of uh, what type of projects you need to give to one uh, ODA partner. Because you cannot give everything to just one. Like uh, much as you would want to give it to Japan probably, you shouldn't do that. <laughs> right? uh, Why not? No. Well, well, let, let us uh, uh, make us understand uh, why. No? Well, there's the always that risk of... The currency the risk yes. is number one. Okay. Okay. Then the other one is... Um, you're not limiting yourself. You shouldn't be limiting yourself to just one source of technology. Where the best, uh, there should be a good match between your requirements and their uh, what they're providing you. Okay. Yeah. So in your selection of loan, all of these are being compared. I mean, yeah. uh, different loan packages from different lenders are being compared. Yes. Yes. And you look at the entire uh, situation. Yeah. And at that point in time, which is the best for the country? Yes, and we also have to consider the headroom of lenders. Much as you, like say, uh, we are really looking at other sources. We have, in fact, um, um, started meeting up again with ODA partners and to check what, are the, uh, what can they offer us. So we're increasing the number of uh, sources as far as we're concerned. So we're looking into their headroom because not all of them could afford to lend that much. Some can only lend you 300 or 100 over three years. And then, so you need to picture out, oh, then what kind of projects can they, you have to listen to them, what kind of projects are they into? And it has to match your requirements. It's not as if this is my requirement and this is your, if it doesn't meet, then it, it can't do a, a transaction. From a layman point of view, no, um, uh, the, 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 the China loans are uh, below the ADB World Bank interest rates, but higher than the Japanese. No? But yet we, we, we choose the, in some of our projects, in fact, uh, if everything pushes through, 19 projects out of the 75 will be uh, borrowed from, that's from, from China. No? So what Mr. is Chair, the advantage? Can I just ask, out of the 75, Ilan, if ever, Mapupunta sa Japanese. Kasi you already mentioned 19 with China. How about the others? So, sorry, Madam Senator, if, if with you begging your indulgence, ma'am, just to um, maybe quickly respond to the uh, comments of the Honorable Chairman. Um, I think when we, when the Philippine government uh, decides on where to borrow. No, I think there are several considerations that need to be addressed. The first one is, and the most important one, is the willingness of the lenders to lend. Uh, Mr. Chairman, no? yung, yung kumbaga, kumbaga po, sabi nga po ni Asik Didit, the lenders have a limited budget to lend. No? So if Japan says, uh, I'm going to lend the Philippines uh, Ten billion dollars, for example, um, Japan typically allocates that uh, amount to projects where they have 
the comparative advantage, i.e. the subway. Um, and I think it is in our best interest uh, to borrow uh, for the Metro Manila subway from a country like Japan who has the expertise uh, in building a subway given, this, given similar conditions between Metro Manila and, say, cities like Tokyo. Um, and because of that, we can avail of the low interest rates offered by Japan. Uh, so I think that's the first, meaning we, uh, the Philippine government cannot allocate all of the uh, uh, projects to one country because hindi din naman po nila fa-fund yon. Pangalawa, I think very important also, with respect to the interest rates, I think uh, we have to understand that the interest rates of the lending countries depends uh, on various factors that are independent of each other. Meaning the interest rates of China uh, are very different from the interest rates of Japan because of the economic conditions of those countries. And also because of the currencies by which we are borrowing, uh, where we are borrowing from. No? So the interest rates for yen denominated loans are clearly much, much, much lower than say a dollar denominated loan as explained by DOF earlier. So it's I think it's really not, uh, uh, a correct comparison to say uh, Japanese rates are zero, close to zero, whereas Chinese rates are close to two, because they're, they're, they're very different in the same way that if we borrow, say, from Europe or from the United States, the interest rates will also be uh, very different from those, say, from China, Korea, or, or Japan. Okay, uh, yeah. you, you know, I, I agree not, with your point, but you know, it doesn't change the fact that. Japan has a close to 0% inter interest rate compared to China who has uh, 2 to 3 and ADB who has 3. I mean, fact yun na ito yung interest rate nila, di ba? So I mean, that's a, it, that that's is a true. figure, right? That, that, is, that is true, ma'am. That is true. Um, which I think strategically also, the, this and, is why... And we're not saying naman na perket nga na lower yung inter, inter... It doesn't necessarily mean na perket lower yung interest rate nila. It would be better because there are other things to consider Correct. aside from the interest Correct. rate. Correct. Tsaka hindi din naman po mapapautang ng Japan lahat ng borrowing requirements ng Pilipinas for build, build, build. Siguro, as a, baka, I, can I just get an update? Um, because during the previous Congress, I was a member of the oversight for mga ODAs. And then, during that time, di ba meron tayong existing loan for North Rail? Correct? And then, basically, this will be the same project na in award natin, uh, na we're doing with JICA. Tama po ba? The North Rail. Basically, it's the same. Hindi, yung papunta mong Bulacan? North-South, di ba? That's... Japan, but um, it was already funded by China. Yeah, that tutuban, tutuban to malolos ba yun? Yeah, the, the first first iteration during the Arroyo, Arroyo administration was the North Rail. However, we have closed that project. And then what happens to the loan? Uh. We, we go by, uh, like, if it's required for us to pay, then we pay the, the loan. So it all depends on the, uh, the, uh, the, the, what they call this, the terms of the loan. Are you in the process of no, I, uh, negotiating? I, I, unfortunately, or I'm not really uh, involved in that, that one. Uh, it's an old loan, and uh, I, we can get back to you on the status of that loan. Just so. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, as a, again, uh, for the information, everyone, unlike choosing a contractor, uh, there's a limited, no, a limited bidding uh, happening in the uh, in, in the execution of the loan or in the selection of the loan. Is there such a thing as bidding? Not for, really. For the loan? So what happens is that, like, say, in the case of Japan. There are several types of, uh, they have several Correct. facilities. Mm -hmm. So you get to choose which ones would actually be um, applicable and most advantageous to okay. us. Okay, no? so there is no, for example, I have this project but and but all of you will 
Uh, no. Give me your best terms. May, may ganun bang nangyayari? Um, not, not as, uh, as like, um, not as what you're describing, but what we're doing is, an, in a number of projects, we're doing like partnerships between, or co-financing. Mm. This is to, like say, between ADB and uh, AIB and World Bank, when um, we're trying to leverage the com uh, comparative advantages of the two. Mm. So it's a good pair. Now, in the case of Japan, we partnered them with ADB. So, because ADB has actually, in parang if you compare it to other multilateral, it's one of the cheapest sources of financing among the multilateral. So, we're partnering them uh, with uh, JICA and for a lot of good reasons. No? So, th that's one way of doing it. Uh, Most of these are bilateral negotiated. We, we um, what did you say? So, we get to, yes. The, the terms of the loans are all bilaterally negotiated. The, those lo the terms of the loan are actually out there. Mm. You, you cannot really, like in the case of ADB and World Bank, you cannot really negotiate. That's mm. it. They're, okay. They are actually applicable to all ADB so and World Bank. So yeah. it's a standard yes. package. It's a standard package. Okay, for all. Siguro, Mr. Chair, um, for example, kanyari ako yung Mindanao Real. Hindi ko ba yan kanyari, uh, o sige, we will be having this Mindanao, Mindanao Rail projects. Or China, give us your proposal. Japan, give us your proposal. ADB, hindi ba ganun yung, pro, yung, um, yung process? Or automatic you just talk to one country? Yes, uh, Your Honor. Uh, first, uh, with regard to Senator Gachal, Gachal's point about you have a project, then you just offer to any ODA partner. Let me answer that point that uh, that was test that was tried during the well given my years in the NEDA during the Ramos and Arroyo administration, what we call bid plus financing. However, the problem now, because of the Senate investigations on projects that were involved in the last administ I mean the Senate investigation, the last administration, the current administration prefers an outright G to G arrangement. The problem with bid plus financing is that sometimes there is no G2G. There is no government to government and under the ODA law of 1996 must be sovereign financing. And we have had several, in fact, investigations, are, uh, cases, arbitrations. Uh, we can provide you the details of this slit uh, in another venue or through further communication. So the current preference is G2G. When it becomes G2G, in answer to Senator Binay's point. The problem there is that, for example, in, in, well, not really a problem, but the process required entails adhering to the program, what we call the programming process of the bilateral or multilateral donor. In the case of uh, World Bank and ADB, we go through a, in effect, a three-year programming cycle. Because basically, the main point here, for ADB, World Bank, JICA, they provide technical assistance grants in preparing the projects. Therefore, once we get into that mode, as I earlier tried to, to elucidate, it's very difficult to just immediately turn around and talk to another donor because essentially that's where we have been in terms of the development cooperation. Now, in the case of, you know, in the case of other bilaterals, the Europeans, for example, that can be done. You, we, we, we have a feasibility study, uh, a bilateral like uh, Austria will say, okay, we'll do it further, and then we'll see whether we can sell it to the, no, unfortunately, the Austrian government does not have a G2G. What happened now is that there is a project of DPWH that from Austria it is now under UK because UK is, is willing to provide a G2G concessional funding. So parang bay kumuha nung feasibility study from another supplier to another supplier. We can give you further details also on this if, you, if the Senate committee is interested to find out. But be that as it may, the whole point here in China is since we're engaging in a new, in a new renewed cycle, uh, at this point, the, the number of projects that in the IFPs that we have been discussing for, for possible China, at this stage, we still have no particular, well, we're talking at about, I understand from our staff about, about three mil three billion. The envelope is about three billion dollars. The thing is, uh, in terms of the uh, number of projects that that can be accommodated, it's still uh, it's still not well fixed. 
Because unlike in, uh, no, okay, uh, for the China envelope, the so far commitment that the administration has been able to secure is about $3.4 billion. But the, the size or the number of projects is still moving because unlike in the Japanese envelope, they have a pledge, in fact, of about $8.9 billion. But the bulk of this is already going to the mega subway project. No? We're expecting that the whole mega subway may reach up to half of this, about $4 billion. And an answer to your question, Senator Binay, whether we can still continue to get that concessional. As I've mentioned the, in our last uh, high-level discussion in Osaka two weeks ago, uh, the Japanese side already indicated that given the Philippines is graduating to the upper middle income class country, we they, they are only seeing probably one or two projects under this very, con almost zero. We will now be reverting to the regular or untied loan of about, currently estimated to be about 1.74 interest rate. Mababa pa rin po, pero as pointed out by ASIC Diditan, however, foreign exchange uh, movements indicate that the relative kumbaga, kumbaga weighted, weighted value, risk calibrated value, baka the Chinese will actually be even less costly in, in terms of the re when you get into the pay repayment period already in the future. Yeah, Mr. Chair, thank you, Asa Kui. Kasama din ba din sa terms of reference niya yung labor requirements? Um, because you have to face the fact na talagang nagkaroon ng ano ba yan, uh, su supply of uh, con Chinese construction workers. Kasama ho ba dun sa terms of reference na if it's a Chinese uh, ODA or grant, may X number of employees, Chinese employees? May ganun, may kasama ho ba yun sa terms of reference? Because, I mean, with the others, parang never naman ho natin narinig nagkaroon ng Japanese construction workers for Japanese-funded projects. But with the Chinese, parang may ganong scenario. Asaktan, since that's part of, I think, Senator Bina is referring to the uh, loan uh, details, no? I think, kasama pa, bo, kasama ba ho yung... Uh, negotiated a loan. There, we said definitely there's no preferential for China as far as sourcing is concerned. So it's there in the loan agreement. Now it's all a matter of what's in the contract. Supply so contract. in the supply contract and I don't have, I mean, unfortunately I don't have a copy of the supply contract. And who does the supply contract? The implementing agency. So you can say, for example, if it's a DPWH project, papayag si DPWH na X number of employees will be coming from, let's say, China or Japan? Will they be allowed to do that? Uh, DPWH, any, any comments? Uh, good morning, po, Madam uh, Senator, Mr. Chair. Actually, in a matter of uh, utilizing personnel, for example, from foreign, dun po kasi sa mga term of preferences natin na ginagawa, we're, we're preparing, dun po naka-indicate kung kinakailangan po ng foreign na uh, personality. Kali po, for example, we have the foreign company, na for, for, uh, particularly for example, Chinese firm. May mga, pinapa, may mga kinukuha rin po kasi sila mga key personnel. Eh. Those is skilled. But most of, mostly, for example, like this China grant, the Binondo in Tramuros and the Israela Pantalion, of the siguro ongoing po natin, for example, we're talking about 200 personnel. Ang Chinese po natin doon, mga naglalaro po tayo sa mga 20%. That includes, mo, ano po yun, yung mga skilled po natin. 20 to 25 percent, we're looking on that numbers. Nakasama dun sa terms of reference nyo na... Uh, I'm not so familiar po kasi this is a foreign assistant project. I'm from the PPP. But uh, from from the previous uh, engagement po namin, dun sa mga ibang projects natin, depende po dun sa nilalagay natin. For example, just uh, not grant, a regular foreign assisted project. Naka-identify po dun kung, kung ilan po yung kailangan lang natin na po pwedeng... Doon po sa kanilang proposal sa atin, sa technical proposal nila and the manpower, naka-indicate po doon yung mga kanilang personnel at yung po yung binabalidate natin. Wala pong, kumbaga, wala pong certain obligation na you need to uh, provide certain numbers ng foreign, uh, foreign skilled personnel that will come from their company. There is no such uh, numbers. 
So there's no such uh, uh, ano ba yan? item in the terms of uh, reference yeah. na kailangan. With this, chi with this chi China grant project, uh, Madam, uh, wala, I'm not so familiar with that part. Uh, but now, ang numero pong kaya lang natin ibigay is uh, we're talking about 20% lang po ang participation. Naglalaro po siya, no, estimatedly, yung mga Chinese personnel po natin. Um, siguro baka dole, would you be familiar? Because, syempre, yun, yun yung magiging basis nyo kung ilan lang yung papayagan nyo magkaroon ng um, permit to work. Ano ba, AES? Uh, 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 Honorable Chair and uh, Senator Binay, well, what is important at this point with um, recent meetings among heads of offices, including DOLE and DPWH, uh, DOJ, one agreement that has been forged is regardless of whether these are foreign uh, nationals working in projects that are grants or loans, Etc. Dapat lahat ho ay kumuha ng alien employment permit. So this has been agreed upon. Second, in as far as uh, monitoring is concerned, kailangan lahat mag-submit sa amin, sa Department of Labor, which is the sole uh, authority on issuing these licenses, these uh, work permits. Lahat ay dapat mag-submit, uh, even uh, Bureau of Immigration for the short-term working permits. Third is... Of course, paramount uh, to all of this, ma'am, is kailangan preferential uh, allocation pa rin for Filipino workers. So whether this is 80-20 or 90-10, ay dapat ho sigurong masusi pang pag-usapan ito. Pero kasama ho ba kayo dun sa pagda-draft ng terms of reference? Because... Um, Kasi ako nga, sasabihin nung Chinese counterpart, counterpart na, oh hindi, kasi kailangan namin ito dahil you can't provide that type of uh, job or service. Hindi ho ba dapat kasama yung dole to validate na, oh nga, aminado kami na hindi nga namin kayang i-provide yung ganyang service. Uh, Honorable Chair, uh, ma'am, we are aware of the nuances and peculiarities that uh, specific jobs require based also on whether this is Japanese or Chinese led. Therefore, we are much, much ready to provide inputs. So, kung mapapasama po kami in the framing of these uh, specific terms and conditions, we will be very, very glad to offer our expertise and competence on that regard. Siguro, can you submit to the committee? Because in the other committee, you submitted yung Chinese construction workers. Meron ho bang Japanese construction workers? Apa ho kaming monitor, ma'am, but these, these are the two Chinese uh, projects that we have monitored. Eh. Ito ho yung mga friendship bridges ho ba ito or infrastructure? Yes, sir. Th therefore, uh, ito ho na napapansin namin Ang sinasabi ho nila is because the foremen, the supervisors speak Mandarin, even their equipment and all their machinery are all written e either in Fukien or Mandarin, then by all means, uh, sila yon at yung kailangang mga tao sa ilalim nila, the construction workers, should have the facility to speak the language as well. And uh, mukhang in that particular grant or two grants, wala hong specific requirement as to the uh, pro proportion. But correct me if I'm... That's right. No, actually, well, may I add, Your Honors? Uh, well, I'm reading portions of the... That, we have t that have been taken from the grant agreement. There are sections in the contract agreement between Public Works and the China Road and Bridge Corporation for the two grant bridges that employment of Filipi Filipino workers preference shall be given to qualified Filipino workers in hiring officers, employees, consultants, and workers in relation to the implementation of the project. But as pointed but, out but, by... But as a way nga, kunyari, if you follow the terms, eh, pa, paano kung gawin nilang requirement, kailangan Mandarin speaking yung construction worker. And, I mean, automatic, walang magka-qualify na construction worker natin dahil walang Mandarin speaking naman among our con construction workers. So, if you follow that uh, requirement, eh, pwede nga ho yung bridge na yun will be built by all Chinese construction workers. I mean, that scenario is very possible.
pointed out by uh, by uh, Department of Labor, uh, uh, sorry, by, may I defer you, your honors to DPWS regarding how they're addressing that? Uh, Director Bote, have any any any? Ah uh, yes, uh, if we're talking about the personnel uh, in the uh, China Grand Projects, yung two in dalawa po, yung Binondo in Tamuros at saka Estrella Pantalyon, dun po sa isa natin na naglaro tayo sa 140 eh. Then, ang mga Chinese, ang Chinese po siguro nasa 20, sa almost 30 po, naglalaro po doon. So, we're talking... 30 workers yeah, out mga of 20 something to 30 40. something. Opo. Naglalaro po tayo, the way I look at it, uh, around nag, uh, 20% po ang nandun nating personnel. Mr. Chairman, I think just to... In the uh, agreements with China, on a per-project basis, there are always um, provisions for preferential use of Filipino labor. However, as to the percentages and the, the uh, division between, um, it's really on a case-to-case -case basis depending on the project. But I think as a general rule, if the work can be done by Filipino labor, it will be done by Filipino labor. Uh, in the case of, I think, the bridges uh, uh, being given to the, f to the Philippines via grant, uh, it is only the highly skilled uh, engineers um, uh, that are Chinese, but the majority of the laborers are Filipino. In this case, 140 are Filipino, about 30. Uh, uh, 30 out of the 140 are, are Chinese and the rest are Filipino. Uh, as it, uh, is this true? Na lahat ng Chinese engineers lang, wala yung construction worker? Because I remember yung perm, yung when we did the hearing for illegal foreign workers, may item doon na construction worker. Doon mo ba sa, dun sa project na yan, lahat ho ng yung 20% na yan are all engineers at wala yung gumagawa ng um, manual labor for construction workers. Um, we, thank you. Ma'am, we can look at the information more closely, but more or less at this point, we can more or less confirm the information provided by our colleagues here from DPWH and uh, BCDA. Uh, purposely, ma'am, I, I think the, what, uh, the one good news that we can share with you is the voluntary that we have indeed um, agreed to uh, even fine tune and make cl more closely our coordination with respect to exchanging information and providing us with uh, details of this as to whether these are engineers or uh, jobs that are done by construction workers themselves. But yung construction workers, so very sprinkling lang eh. I suppose ito yung talagang kailangan lang ng makinaria and equipage na nakikita nila yung mga nitty-gritty ma Mandarin or Fukien words doon sa mga makinaria. I guess Ano lang ako kasi, um, Mr. Chair, di ba part of the build, build, build is to create jobs for Filipinos. And kasi yun, di ba parang, ano to eh, we've had projects with um, Japanese, with uh, ADB and other countries. But itong new ones na parang kasama yung labor dun sa uh, ODA or sa grant is parang per just particular with uh, Chinese loans. Kasi, I mean, uh, Asetan, we've, you've uh, had uh, loans with Japan. May narinig ka ba na construction worker na pumasok dito? The, they, they would be too expensive. No? So y usually what happens for Japanese, you have like supervisors lang. Yung nga, high, high level, kanyari mga supervisors or, but yung actual construction workers, parang, ano lang with, um, Chinese uh, grants or loans. So, baka kailangan ho natin tignan din sa NEDA or sa DOF, baka this will add another dimension when we enter into an ODA with um, China or with other countries. Yun lang naman, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chairman, we want to assure the committee and the honorable members that the administration uh, will ensure that the Build, Build, Build program will primarily be for, will benefit Filipino workers. And uh, I think um, we are instituting the necessary safeguards, such as the provisions read by uh, Assistant Secretary or earlier, uh, to ensure preferential use of 
uh, Filipino labor in all these projects, regardless whether they are Chinese, uh, Japanese, or other uh, from other sources. Um, and also, I think what we can we, we, we can do is to regularly update the committee uh, on the status per project. Po. I think yun po important ano, makikita po natin na on a per project basis, ano po ang labor profile ng kada proyekto natin, whether it's a uh, Chinese project or a Japanese project or any other country's project, to, in, to, to report regularly to the committee uh, and to show that there are in fact, uh, there is in fact preferential uh, treatment of Filipino workers for these government projects. Of course, we can only speak for government projects. For the other projects engaged by Chinese or Japanese uh, elsewhere, we cannot speak for that. But for government projects, I think we should report that regularly. That's it. Actually, we recognize the point made by your honors on the uh, highlighting the utilization of local expertise, particularly labor, in our build, build, build projects. But we'd like, in the net, that we'd like to point out that in the it's it's not very easy to compare the Chinese experience as we're having right now, let's say with the Japanese, because the Japanese have been here doing ODA for almost 40 years. In fact, uh, what I'm mentioning is that the, kumbaga, the industrial relations of J uh, Japanese contractors and consultants with Filipino contractors and consultants have been there for a long, long time. In fact, some of the people around here may have worked for Filipino firms that uh, are actually adjuncts of uh, Japanese consulting firms. That being said, the, the, the initial assessment on the part of NEDA is that the, this pr present uh, engagement for Japanese ODA is essentially a turnkey arrangement. They come in, they build, then they leave. But hopefully with, uh, with uh, better rapport between the two governments, particularly through this cooperation process, and better appreciation of our own domestic private firms of how to engage. Actually, this is part of, let me point out that what we're discussing, Your Honors, as a final point, this is only half of the entire framework. In fact, there are other frameworks we have signed with the Chinese government where we are now focusing on deepening private to private, although technically in their terms, private is state-owned enterprise. Technically speaking, there is the other private under this consideration. But this is part of the ge general uh, framework that we are, advo uh, we, are, we, are, we are defining very well with the Chinese government. We can provide further information on these other understandings. The, Mr. Chair, um, as I said, na have na na 40 years of experience with um, Japan. And with China, ho, how long? has been the relationship and how has it been? Yeah, kasi no time ni President Arroyo. We I think no time ba ni President Ramos? No. If, uh, only the China ODA came into being during the time of uh, President Gloria Arroyo, we have only had two projects or one, actually two. Banawang Irrigation and another one at that time. Uh, Gen General Santos Fish Port, where, which were successfully completed. The third one was North Rail, which closed, I which was in effect ended in ar arbitration and, res and settlement, which has uh, been led by DOF. Anyway, this one now we are re engaging, and we are in fact uh, less concerned on your limited competitive selection. We are hoping that the Chinese companies, in fact, that is one of the things that uh, President Vince Dixon was had elaborated. The, the responsibility of good governance in the selection of the companies is actually borne by the Chinese government because if they nominate a, there is in their system what they call tiers, tier one, tier two, tier three state-owned enterprise. In general, the problems that have been experienced in, the, in, in China investments have been dealt with the lower tier because essentially they are just subsidiary companies. So the higher the tier, the higher the, the, kumbaga, the financial capacity, the implementation record. And in fact, that was what uh, President Vince Dixon was talking about, that we are highlighting that in the limited selection basis, we ask the Chinese government to make sure that we are reaching the highest levels of uh, kumbaga, capability and competence and good governance. As far, uh, and we do our own due diligence. So it's, it's a learning process. And and as pointed out by ASEC, uh, sorry, Aragon, we are learning, in fact, 
based on these initial projects. And we, we do have, in fact, also monitoring. We, uh, uh, I already have discussed myself with the project directors of uh, DPWH regarding the two grand projects. It's those, they have interesting stories to say about it. And I'm confirming uh, that sometimes language is a barrier. But we're trying to come up with, uh, well, in terms of contract administration, public works is emphasizing our, umbaga, our superiority in handling these projects with these Chinese contractors. Siguro ka kasi moving forward, can you imagine there's 19 more projects na mukhang um, with China. And with these two projects, medyo may rumblings na na bakit nga may um, Chinese construction workers. What more pag nagsabay-sabay ho itong 19 projects? Actually, if, uh, if I may, from DOF, the 19 projects, let me point out, right now we have three baskets, diba? Two. We only have two. And we have projects. Sorry. Uh, at, the, at present, at this point, we have 19 in the pipeline, but in terms of firm pipeline, we have about uh, what we call two baskets, mga uh, packages. Anyway, and I understand it's only about, at this point, about six. Very definite. So, kumbaga, we'd like to assure the, the committee, your honors, that we are waiting still further than 19. When in fact, as I mentioned, we may have to have a policy discussion on whether, in fact, we are, we are committed to the 19 to China. Baka we will look for other funding sources also. I know who yung six. Fourteen, pala. Okay. Uh, at this point, the two there are two baskets. Uh, in the first basket, we have already the Chico River and the the two bridges, Binondo Intramuros, uh, Estrella Pantalion. Uh, we also have the fourth one is the MWS New Centennial, which is about to be made uh, to be signed, uh, uh, to be effective. We are also working on the north-south, north-south railway south line, the long haul towards Bicol. Uh, two two projects: the uh, Panay Gimaras Negros Island, the Davao City Expressway, the Subic Clark Railway project. Six. Sorry. I've already exceeded the six. Well, I'm now talking about, okay, in the second basket, we have the Subic Clark, the Ambal Shimoy, the five remaining bridges in the Pasig Marikina River Manga floodway, which again may change because we're talking about possible co-financing with ADB on these projects. The Safe Philippines project, we're also uh, finalizing this, uh, well, working towards eventual. That's it. Uh, these are the main projects. We uh, still ano have. Po yung last? What's the last one? Say Philippines. If. Say Philippines Safe. project. Say Philippines project. Ano po yun? Yun yung uh, security uh, peace and order CCTV type of uh, for Davao City and Metro Manila. Manila. Thank you, uh, Asak. Uh, I want to go back to uh, financing, Asak Tan. Itong nine, nine uh, executed loan agreements, no? uh, these are already perfected, ongoing na siya. Yes. Okay. Uh, and well, are well, not, not necessarily, because although they were uh, executed, uh, like in the case of uh, the Kaliwa, it has yet to be made effective. They're still missing uh, a number of, uh, they have to comply with some of the conditions. No? Okay. So as soon as they're done, then yes, they can go on. Uh, Implementing. And uh, are these loan agreements uh, confidential in nature? Um, under the law, uh, we are required to uh, provide, an, um, you know, if there's a request done and made to the right forum, yes. Well, uh, uh, we provide. again, no, we this comply. weekend, ho, eh, I went through the, buti uh, lang kami ni Center Nancy, millennial pa, kaya we went through, I went through the websites of DOF and NEDA, and uh, I couldn't find the, uh, any specifics on the loan agreements. I wanted to personally um, 
analyze the loan agreements and look at the loan agreements, but nowhere in the DOF website that I can find any trace or any summary, man lang, at least summary of the loan agreements. And um, we all know that uh, there are a lot of um, uh, allegations no? uh, flying here and there. And I think it's to the best interest of everyone to um, exercise greater transparency in the loan agreements, even beyond uh, what is required by law, no? because uh, we all want to know. No? And uh, that's also one of the objectives of this hearing, is to understand the process, no? understand uh, the um, criteria or the methodology being employed by DOF, and at the same time, the details of what was uh, entered upon. Uh, at the end, whether China, Japan, Korea, utang ho to eh. And at the end, we will have to pay uh, for these loans at one point in time. So just like Ned, I would like to urge the DOF to, uh, to, to, to uh, extend greater transparency in these loan agreements. It might not be your usual practice because I heard uh, Asek Lambino said, kung may FOI, you know, request, walang problema, but I think alam naman natin situation eh, no? and uh, greater transparency is, um, I think, is, is appropriate at this time. No? Every time that we, just to be uh, candid about it, every time that we execute a loan agreement, the secretary would make an announcement about the terms. So, so there's, we're not hiding the terms. We, we are, in fact, disclosing it. And uh, every time that we uh, apply for, uh, during the budget season, uh, it's actually included in the BESF. So uh, we disclose the terms that we get from the different sources of financing. Um, but again, no, I, over the weekend, sarado po in Senate. Eh, no? And um, I think the uh, general public will not have access to the BESF in the Senate. No? Uh, but all of us have internet. No? And 90% of our Filipinos can access the internet through their phones. So kung meron hong nakapost yan sa website, then it will be easier for us to... Uh, uh, analyze the uh, uh, the loan agreements. Well, it's uh, para sa akin summary will be will suffice, but I think other senators will require much greater detail. But uh, the, the the principle here is transparency, no? and uh, I would like to urge the OF because um, I think it's to the best interest of everyone no? to to know the details of all of this. No? And again, there are 19 projects that will be entered in two uh, with China, about six with Japan, and the rest from various countries. I think uh, mas maganda ho na meron ho tayong understanding of, of the detail. You know? I think that is the uh, one of the um, uh, direction of this hearing. You know? All right, and with that, I would like to also ask uh, the, the BSP, uh, ma'am. No? Um, in the process of entering the loan, no, um, what is the role of the monetary board no, uh, in terms of uh, uh, executing the loan and entering into a loan? No? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, based on the Constitution, all public and publicly guaranteed foreign loans have to get the concurrence of the monetary board. The approval process from the BSP comes in two stages. The first one is the approval in principle, uh, the and then the second one is what we call final approval. So um, when the loans uh, go to the BSP for um, approval in principle, these have actually already uh, completed um, the evaluation of the NEDA and also of the DOF. So um, in, in uh, evaluating the loan, then we looked at the financing terms as well as the monetary implications of the loan on the balance of payments and the um, external debt. Uh, in looking at the financing terms, we would normally compare the proposed financing terms with uh, uh, previous uh, loans that have been approved, similar loans that have been approved 
it could be with the same creditor or with other creditors. And then we try to compare whether the loans, I mean the financing terms that are being proposed currently would favorably compare to those that have been approved uh, previously. So uh, in cases where we find that um, the current terms um, may be higher than those that have been previously uh, approved, then we um, we state in that approval that we encourage or we ask the DOF to uh, negotiate to further lower uh, such types of, let's say, the interest rate or, per, uh, yeah, the interest rate. So, and then we provide the approval in principle. And then that also gives them the authority to negotiate with the creditor. And then after they've signed the loan, then they go back to the DSP and then apply for the final approval. And then for the final approval, we actually look at the loan documents and compare whether these are the same as those that have been approved under the approval in principle process. And if there are no changes, then we actually provide them with the final approval. So then that becomes, uh, then they can implement. Mom, this happens outside of the ICC. Yes. So by yeah, process, I'm, I'm, I'll put this sim uh, in simple terms. No? So ICC, after ICC, it goes to DOF. Then uh, after DOF, it goes to the BSP. Yes, okay. um, Mr. Chair. And then... Uh, Sorry, just to qualify, uh, the BSP, a monetary board member, is a designated member of, of the, the ICC. ICC. So actually, the merong may... May, particip may technical participation, uh, no, a third, how would I say, not participation, but they, they're there for the continuity of the discussion into the monetary. Does it go back to the ICC for approval? No, not really. Wala na. Hindi na. So after, after BSP, uh, go na in loan. No? That's the, uh, yes, that's the process. Chair, okay. yes. Ma'am, you, you want to add? Complete the, uh, the process. So as soon as we have the ICC approval, we also secure the forward obligation authority from the Department of Budget and Management, after which we also secure the monetary board approval in principle. And then we go for the office of the president to, say, to ask for the uh, authority from the president <coughs> to negotiate. So that's the only time that we can negotiate uh, when we have all of those approvals uh, in place. Uh, incidentally, we also have that uh, committee that reviews the loan docs. And this is the interagency uh, committee uh, foreign on foreign loans. So th those would have to be cleared by that committee. Thank you. Um, we'll go with the uh, other other source persons uh, who are here with us right now. Dole, any, any, anything to share uh, regarding the, the project, uh, the uh, topic? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Sir, we have institutional support for build, build, build. Uh, th these are two general uh, programs or initiatives. One is, uh, of course, the uh, job facilitation that we do on a traditional and uh, on a regular basis. And another one, sir, is the labor market information. As far back as 2010, we have uh, plotted or mapped out uh, Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao jobs fit program that actually spoke of uh, generating key employment generators as well as critical and hard to fill jobs. Of course, what surfaced here uh, prominently is the construction in their a construction industry. So from 2010 up to the time that we stood up, uh, build, 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 we have calibrated and recalibrated our data generation on construction so that we could really identify based on the industry requirements, w what are the jobs uh, necessary uh, required by the <coughs> program as well as uh, what can be done in terms of assessment, training, and certification process. So we are ready, sir, to provide you some very specific data, salient features on, for example, what the industry needs right now, uh, let's say on a, w w what uh, the, the pool of skills and competencies required, how many versus the trained and the assessed and the skilled workers that we have. I am joined here by um, Director Nikki Tutay who can provide you the details. She belongs, she heads the Bureau of Local Employment, sir. Uh, director, any, anything, anything to share regarding the topic? Uh, 
maybe Mr. Chair, uh, we would just like to reiterate the need for additional skilled workers in the country um, to fulfill the sales gap in the construction sector. And um, maybe that's all, thank you. Thank you. Director Bote, any meron kayong gustong i-share? Aside from the ones you mentioned earlier, no? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Actually, on the part of uh, DPWH, uh, in support with the uh, job generations, we have plenty of projects that uh, pwede na po natin ma-onboard, and some are already ongoing. Uh, one big project that really w one aspect of the build, build, build of the, uh, the uh, current administration is the Luzon Spine Expressway. Actually, ito po yung uh, travel natin from Northern Luzon to Southern Luzon. Now, kas now po kasi what we're, uh, we're spending something, siguro po kung magagaling kayo ng Bicol, pupunta ka po ng La Union, you will spend mga 26 hours po siguro with the current situation po natin. <coughs> now, uh, there are plenty of proposals, uh, uh, mostly uh, PPP projects, na gusto po natin mag- uh, if uh, we are going to be on board or construct and completed everything, ang pag-uusapan lang po natin dito, very minimal na timeline. For the meantime po kasi, well, uh, the, there are ongoing projects. Uh, Isa-isa po natin, uh, nandiyan po yung ating Skyway Stage 3, we have the Tarlac Pangasinan Luzon, uh, yung Expressway po natin, yung Tiplex. Now po, kung manggagaling ka ng uh, bandang south, uh, pag nagawa po natin yung Skyway Stage, eh, galing ka po ng bandang south, Doon ka na po dadaan from Wendia. Kasi Wendia, you'll go down Wendia. Eh. That's a typical thing. Eh. Pero with the, utilization, with the uh, realization of the Wendia, diretso na po tayo, nakatap na po tayo sa NLEX. I-summarize po natin. Pag manggaling ka po sa farthest south, meron po tayong proyekto doon na nakapropose na sa, 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 sa atin sa national government as a PPP project. Yun po yung manggagaling tayo somewhere in Camarines Sur, in Pili. Then from the Pili going to Naga, that's a uh, expressway project also uh, na under, pro, under feasibility study by the Region 5 Office of DPWH. Then after po yung uh, Pili, mababaypass niya po yung Naga, then we'll go on with the, may tinatawag po tayong uh, ino-onboard natin, yung Quezon Bicol Expressway. This is around 220 kilometers. Idudoktong po natin ito dun sa ongoing project ngayon na tinatawag natin Toll Road 4. Yung Toll Road 4 po ito, this is from Lucena, Quezon, uh, Initially, 56.87 kilometers po ito from Lucena, uh, from Tayabas muna siya, onward dito sa Santo Tomas. But we extend that to 60, around 60 kilometers, onward na po siya sa Lucena. Now, pagdating mo po kasi na sa Santo Tomas, nandun ka na sa South Luzon Expressway, di po ba? <coughs> from the South Luzon Expressway, uh, you will take the Skyway Stage 1, Skyway Stage 2, and now the ongoing project of Skyway Stage 3. Yung po yung magtatabrace sa may uh, Sergeant Rivera na yun, onward. Dito po sa Mayor A. Bonifacio, papunta po ito, nakatap na po ito, diretso sa ating NLEX. And then when we go down to uh, North Tucson Expressway, uh, that's uh, already, you go to North Tucson, we want to go to Baguio, dire-diretso po yan hanggang SCTEX, then you go to TPLEX. By now po kasi ang TPLEX po natin, hanggang po Surubio po tayo. Ang composition po ng TPLEX natin, nasa 90 kilometers po ito. Now, nasa po Surubio tayo, but uh, within this year, siguro po we're targeting uh, third quarter of this year, kaya na po siguro natin buksan yung hanggang doon po sa Rosario. Ibig sabihin po, ah, nandun na tayo sa Rosario. Plus, ang DPWA sa naman po, meron po siyang pinaformulate na another P expressway project na from Rosario onward to San Fernando, La Union. So that's it. Ah, kung 26, km, 26 hours po na tinatravel natin yung north to south ngayon, ang target po natin dyan, ah, with the, ah, eto pong ano ng aming sekretary at mga cabinet po natin, we're looking of 9 to 10 hours lang po from Northern Luzon hanggang Southern Luzon. Plus, uh, another good project siguro, ito po, Expressway. One good example naman po ng uh, locally funded project natin na talagang really helpful for the, for the traffic congestion. Ito pong Santa Monica Lawton Bridge po natin, which is already ongoing. Uh, very strategic po yung kanyang location, which is between the, uh, uh, the C5 and the EDSA, by which uh, siguro po pag peak hour, Kayang i-cater po nitong uh, Bonifacio Global City Road Link Project. Yung Santa Monica, Lawton Bridge na mag-traverse po siya sa Pasig River. Kaya po nitong i-cater yung mga 35% ng EDSA traffic po natin. So, role talaga really helpful po niyan. Pag-usapan po natin sa economic uh, return niya, talagang uh, halos 50% to, sir, eh, ang uh, EIRR nito, more than pa, more than 50%. Galing ka po rito sa may summer in Capitolio, in Brickstone, Fairlane, Onward, tatawid ka po from Santa Monica. Tawid ka ng uh, 
Pasig River, diretso ka na po nito sa loob ng Global do sa 8th Avenue. So that's a very uh, good alignment. Now, doon naman po sa one good example naman po dito sa ating uh, foreign assisted project. We have a JICA project also, malapit na rin po ma-onboard, the Metro Manila Skyway Stage 3. Uh, ito po, uh, meron po tayo dito somewhere in Green Meadows, malapit po sa may, uh, yung Acropolis. Mga isang kilometro po itong Bayadak along C5. So really, this will decongest traffic at the area. And there's another, another, uh, another uh, composition po nito. Doon po sa bandang Trinoma, doon po tinatayuin natin yung ating common station. Meron po kasing gagawin ng DPWs na kapropose as part of the Metro Manila Skyway Stage 3 is a tunnel. Here is Trinoma and this is SM along North Avenue. May tunnel po yun na nakaprogram. We go tunnel, then going, going Mindanao. So if you're from North Avenue, hindi po ba medyo bottleneck yung turning left to Mindanao. May tunnel po tayong ipoprovide doon, part of Metro Manila Skyway Stage 3. And then also with the combination of flyover from Mindanao onward to North Avenue papuntang Agham. And uh, also in Mindanao, we have the Dabao uh, City Bypass, uh, may pinakamahaba po tayong tunnel, almost 2.4 kilometers. There are plenty of projects that will really support our, our big, big, big projects in the government. Thank you, Mr. Senator. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Director. Uh, Vince, any, any okay na tayo? Uh, kay Mr. Uh, Pexon of the uh, PPP Center, anything to... Thank you, Mr. Chair. Well, as we are talking about financing of projects and the risks to government, well, as, as you probably know, uh, in the case of PPP projects, the financing is being handled, excuse me, by the private sector. So we're not exposed to directly to the debt of the private sector in those projects. However, uh, we have to be also on, on the guard for uh, possibilities of default because of the termination payments that would kick in in case uh, default uh, happens. So we are very careful to look at the financial models of the projects being proposed, uh, looking at the bankability of the project, which means are there enough or sufficient uh, cash generation or cash flows to cover the debt that has to be paid by the private sector. Uh, and of course, we are also looking at uh, whether, especially for the case of unsolicited proposals, whether these are compliant with the limitations set by the law. I'm referring to the amended BOT law, whether there are any uh, direct government subsidies, uh, direct government guarantees that are being proposed by the private sector in those unsolicited projects. So, binabantayan po namin yun. So, there are quite a number of uh, projects, in fact, unsolicited projects, rail, airports, uh, in the pipeline, uh, not part of the 75, uh, the list of 75 flagship projects, but these are quite major projects like the Bulacan International Airport, yung pong uh, uh, MRT-10 the C5 alignment uh, rail project, yung pong extension ng um, uh, Cavite uh, line ng LRT1 among other projects. So, ito po yung uh, binabantayan or uh, dumadaan po ngayon sa proseso ng approval sa ICC din. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pexon. Uh, Ms. Uh, De Guzman? Yes. Um, Ms. Rose De Guzman of yes. uh, Ibon Foundation. Thank you, uh, Mr. Thank Senator, you. Mr. Chair. Um, as a research organization, we have five uh, research problem areas regarding build, 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 and uh, thank you for the discussion. Uh, I've been enlightened. Um, our number one question is about economic uh, absorptive capacity because how do we now, uh, what are the implications of the downward economic growth trends that we are seeing in the continuation of the program? Uh, we have the slowest GDP growth um, this year. We also have the worst current account deficit in 18 years and the highest inflation in 10 years and um, the worst uh, national budget deficit in eight years. So um, in terms of its absorptive capacity, major questionable siya. And uh, also we, we looked at the 11 and now 14 uh, ongoing construction and completed projects. The, um, the, the share of those projects in the total indicative amount of 2.1 trillion is just hovering around 2%, no? 
and the DBM was also saying that for 2019, they will just allocate 4.7% in infrastructure spending of the GDP, which is uh, lower than, than what they allocated uh, last year or the previous year. But when we talk about feasibility, we're talking about economic uh, feasibility and financial feasibility. So we've been enlightened that in terms of economic feasibility, we are not putting forward the question of whether uh, the economic costs or the economic benefits actually outweigh the environmental and social costs. And so we would like to see that also in the feasibility studies. But in terms of the financial feasibility, ang question sa amin lagi, how do we pay for it? How does the government subsidize it? No? Um, in, in here in Build, 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 it's basically transportation related. 52 of the 75 flagships are transportation related. In other countries, the government subsidizes the fare of the public. Dito kasi hindi, it's user fee. So if you look at the feasibility study of the Manila subway, it's basically you will pay for that uh, infrastructure. So, so that's, that's, that's one question. The second one is how do we address the question of poverty reduction and um, yung payability? Kasi yung kung ang banner is jobs, 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 or ang banner is poverty reduction, when we look at the infographics of where the value of build, build, build is, it's NCR uh, Central Luzon and Southern Tagalog centric, which uh, where the poverty incidence is the lowest in the country. When we look at the payability, as I've already mentioned, of the growing of, of the growth trends, mukhang makukuha lang yon sa regressive taxes, and of course the chronic underfunding of social services, so we can repay uh, these ODA loans in the future. The third question is about transparency. Uh, in June 2018, Ebon Foundation wrote the DOF asking for a copy of the Chico River Dam Loan Agreement, which was signed in April that year. And we were told nga that it has a confidentiality clause which prohibits the department to share no, yung mga details of the loan agreement to any third party. So again, there's a, the public uh, announcement by the um, ASEC Lambino saying na a proper forum. So parang for us, as, an, as a non-government organization, we'd like to know where that proper forum is because we're asking directly the agency. Tapos, if you ask other agencies, DPWH, DOF, we've also gone to DBM and other uh, build, build, build agencies or in the inter-coordinating um, committee, uh, sinasagot kami ng i-Google nyo. So, <laughs> kulang nga sagot IGMG. So, uh, um, actually, um, th th the question of transparency, this is public interest. This is public infrastructure. And, and it's in relation to my first question. If it outweighs the social cost, the displacement, and the environmental cost, walang iimik doon, no? So we'd like to know how do we address that. The, the f and relation to the transparency is already what has been revealed as void and voidable or disadvantages and onerous terms in the Chico River uh, loan agreement, no? Uh, I will not go into the detail. Siguro I, I will just allow... Um, uh, uh, senatorial candidate Neri Colmenares to go into that because he's a lawyer. Pero in the loan agreement, na kung saan it shall be governed by the, the laws of China, the loan agreement will be governed by the laws of China, tapos doon nilagay niya that um, any dispute arising out of or in connection with this agreement shall have the right to submit, each party shall have the right to submit to the China International Economic and Trade Arbitration Commission. Yeah, it's not a court, and, um, but it will be its decision. The arbitration shall be governed by the rules of say attack. A decision shall be final and binding upon both parties, and this will be held in Beijing. For Ibo, ang tanong lang namin, bakit hindi third party ang gawin na arbitration commission? And, and of course, the rest of the other uh, honor rules or disadvantages depends on the lawyer's view. Na, na conditions. Uh, how do we address that? No? In a loan agreement, that's, uh, I believe, is not even part of the 75 flagship, which becomes now a gold standard in any loan agreement in terms of infrastructure or siguro mas sa dams. Then recently, back to transparency, we again called the DOF on the Kaliwa Dam and I'm now enlightened na may kulang papala doon, so it cannot be made to the public. But we were referred to MWSS. So pinagpasapasaan kami ng MWSS now, we wrote a letter yesterday, sabi nila, they will respond to us soon. So, there's hope in, in that, no? 
But then again, the Kaliwa Dam will displace a lot of communities doon sa kanyang, um, where it, it will be located. The last point is, I'm now enlightened about um, yung development effectiveness principles which were signed by donor countries and even by our own government and, and some, um, some friends from the NEDA were also part of that monitoring. The principles would be mutual accountability, democratic ownership, transparency, et cetera, no, in terms of ODA loans and other aid, um, aid forms. No? Um, doon sinasabi, we will lower tide aid. We should abolish tide aid because it's against the, the principles of democratic ownership and mutual, mutual and, and uh, accountability and transparency. But here we are around the table, we are discussing that it is, it is actually the common practice, uh, not whether with China or with Japan. So again, it's, it's a wonderment uh, coming from another, um, we're a member of the international civil society organizations monitoring the development effectiveness principles. Paano natin yon iya address? So those are my research problems. Thank you, thank you. Um, uh, Ma'am Manialak, uh, I just also want to probe, no, because I, I wanted to ask this later on since binuksan na ni Mr. Guzman. This administration has uh, has um, uh, preference over ODA rather PPP, no? And alam natin ODA is a balance sheet, has a balance sheet effect, meaning lalaki yung ating utang, no? Uh, looking at the 75 flagship projects worth 2.1 trillion, what will be our um, fiscal situation by 2022? No? Assuming all of this will be undertaken. Uh, I'm sure that this is the job of the monetary board no? to project. Um, so, what will what, be. What, what, uh, Mr. Chair, what we do essentially is that for every loan that gets to be approved by the monetary board, uh, that is what I mean when we say we look at the monetary implications of those loans on the external debt. So, we actually look at whether by incurring the debt, we continue to maintain a sustainable uh, debt. Profile. So essentially, we look at our capacity to pay. Um, so based on, for instance, our, our projections of imports, exports, and then uh, we also look at, uh, for instance, other external debt ratios like uh, our reserves and also, for instance, the debt ratio. So I, I, I make this very simple. Mm. If we execute the 2.1 trillion today, are we in good fiscal situation? Uh, Mr. Chair, it's difficult to answer because I'm not quite sure whether we've undergone uh, doing a stress test incorporating that uh, specific number into the, the uh, maturity, uh, the, the, the one that we have, the debt servicing uh, tables that we have right now. So we can actually try to do that. And, and but aren't you supposed out. to do a, a simulation or stress test now? The because well this is already projected. Eh. We and excited na lahat kami. Pero <laughs> but if we are going to be uh, uh, under a very difficult fiscal position, then uh, it has to be, oh. this has to be looked at also. Because if it's PPP, then off balance sheet yan. Mm -mm. We don't have anything to worry. Uh -uh. No? But this is going to be carried in, it's not even balance sheet, in our wallets. No? Uh -huh through our taxes, mm -mm. Uh, ano ba ang magiging uh, situation ho natin? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, every quarter, we put out an external debt report, which we provide both houses of Congress as well as the Office of the President. In that particular external debt report, after uh, coming out with the facts, facts about whether th there has been an increase, decrease, uh, what sort of uh, creditors we have by type of interest rates, and et cetera. We also have a, s a section there which actually conducts a stress test uh, where we do certain assumptions. So what happens if, for instance, uh, there is a depreciation of the exchange rate? By how much should the exchange rate depreciate for us to be able to say that we can no longer uh, service the debt? Or by how much should GDP be reduced for us to be able to say that we are now in, in um, for instance... Are loans incurred already? Uh, uh, but how no, about no, no. future yeah, loans? Because uh, oh. uh, these are the... These are the plans, eh? Uh, so, uh, Mr. Chair, we also have this uh, exercise where uh, by September of which year, we actually get uh, 
borrowing proposals from the various private companies. And then we also look at the projections for the public side, and then we input that into our stress test and find out whether if we actually incur all those debt, which may be actually be uh, very substantial, if we will continue to have a uh, uh, sustainable uh, external debt situation. And so far, even if we input all those numbers, we are still very far from uh, being in a similar situation where we were in the 80s where we had a debt crisis. B basic question, ma'am. Our debt to, our debt to uh, GDP right now is how much? Uh, I 41, 42? Yeah, I think it's about... Total, huh? It's about, but this is external debt only, uh, Mr. Chair. Correct, correct. So it's about 23.5%. Correct, but total. As of 2016, it's 42%. 42. And if we now undertake this 2.1 simulation natin? I, I I, I'm assuming we will pursue this. No? This yes, is yes. part of the masterpiece. Eh. No? So... Uh, Based on the, the simulation uh, natin. what we did, uh, we asked the Bureau of the Treasury to look into that, no? and the trajectory is downward. Pa rin. Uh, we're looking at a 38.6 debt-to-GDP uh, ratio for 2022, by 2022. But Take into account the 75 flagship I projects. I, I think I'm not very sure about the full disbursement, but the a sizable disbursement would have been considered under this. Okay. So w what you're saying is um, a sizable disperse considering the sizable disbursement, it will hover around 38.6. Okay, but we have to run the simulation for this. The uh, parang uh, expenditure program of the government. So that's the fiscal side versus the. Uh, so you have a uh, disbursement versus revenues versus borrowing. So they've mm. all considered that, and based on their, um, we have a treasury and a person. Uh, they're looking at a 38.6 debt to GDP ratio by 2022. So, actually, well, Mr. Chair, when we formulated the IF, when the government formulated the IFPs, in the con in the construct of the build, 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 or the golden age of infrastructure, we were actually targeting 9 trillion pesos uh, over the whole medium term. The flagship only covers about one third. So even in based on the, na, na we have just abated the public investment program under the current development plan for 2017-2012. In point of fact, the agencies have submitted and the corporations are projecting a an expenditure obligation level of about 7.4 billion between 2017 to 2022 but that is that of course mr chair is subject to budgetary review uh, in terms of both the finance dbm and uh, bsp the question really is actually this is only infra of course there are other expenditures union sinabing an point ng ibon that there may be a trade off but we are we are given the advice by DBM as the fiscal uh, planning authority here. Apart from the debt aspect, no, for finance, is that uh, from an obligational basis, the 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 fiscal program accommodates the flagship. The question now is the other half, whether in fact the financing will follow through, and if that were the case, would this project still be continued, nonetheless? And second, whether the agencies really have very good absorptive capacity to deliver. But my point is, I want to understand our fiscal situation by 2022 when all of this come into play. That is my uh, point. But, but that is my uh, uh, point of the matter. And the reason for that is I might be. I want to be confident in saying that all of this ODA being undertaken by the government we will still be in good fiscal health by 2022. Take into account, and at uh, si Ms. Guzman, no? uh, among the ASEAN countries, we're actually the one uh, in terms of uh, growth, we're actually uh, on a downward trend in the last three years. No? So in terms of the size of our economy, um, it's growing, but not as a, f 
not faster than than what we are uh, projecting no so looking at all of these factors no tapos may inflation ka pa buti ngayon medyo bumaba na ng 4 but looking at all of this are we still in a good fiscal position that is the point of my uh, inquiry no Yes, Your Honor, we will, uh, we will have to get back to, particularly in discussions with DBCC, Development Budget Coordination Committee, whether the numbers we're looking in the build, 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 and the total infrastructure buildup is still consistent with the fiscal scenario that is being targeted by the administration by 2022. But uh, Nenenda takes exception with the Ebon analysis that we are actually down, going in terms of growth going down. If you look at the other countries, actually we are relatively stable. The, the, the growth, downward growth is because of last year's inflation effects on our growth. If we take away the inflation, we would have been, we'd have grown larger. It's a blip in terms of the inflation impact. But let us, the net points forward that in fact the growth of the Philippines has largely been led by consumption growth. Now with this investment infrastructure, we are hoping that a more fundamental structural uh, resilience in terms of both uh, construction, industry, and other related uh, manufacturing and industry services will be put forward with this. That's why at the end of the day, in fact, I think it's a bit uh, lopsided to, uh, to compare, let's say, Vietnam, because in Vietnam already spent so much on infrastructure. That's why they are reaping the gains of continued growth. So is Indonesia. And Malaysia is all actually moving forward because they have also brought leaps and bounds with regard to infrastructure development. In other words, it's not a simplistic parameter just to compare growth rates, but also the what we call the starting base. Uh, we should look at uh, how really the countries have been able to uh, been able to maximize ca maximize capital investment. But we do recognize the concern. Mr. Chair, regarding the capacity of the government or the Philippines to absorb this ex expenditure, that is a continuing concern. More, uh, more, more effectively also how government balances between the infrastructure and the other social. And we take note the Senate's concern regarding whether in fact the fiscal capability ensures that both all of these uh, development requirements will be answered, will still be provided by government. But at the end of the day, going back again to the concept of you know, uh, willingness to pay, that is precisely why we have these economic rates of return. Because basically, if the, the point of view of uh, Ebon here is purely financial, it is not just economic. It is not economic in the sense that they want to uh, maintain the subsidized levels of support. In fact, we would submit, Senate, uh, Your Honor, sir, that. While PPP may be off balance sheet, however, the contingent liability becomes real and it becomes an impact. Hopefully we can get more. We would like to work with PPP Center in coming up with a very clear report together with the OF on the real contingent, which goes back again to the principle that this administration, administration taken. We are doing these projects under government lead because we want to make sure that at the end of the day, the tariff setting is purely on the operation and maintenance by the private sector, which will make it more uh, uh, paid. In, in effect, we have up, uh, front loaded the capital subsidy of all of this infrastructure. We'd like to make that clear in our message to the public that the administration understands the need to subsidize infrastructure to the, to the greater public. And that's why we're taking the lead in building this infrastructure through government expenditure rather than, you know, a shared capital risk arrangement with the private sector at this time. I do respect the administration's direction on going into ODA, no? Uh, there are pros and cons between ODA and PPP. Um, that's a long discussion. That's, an, that's for another uh, session. But what I want to understand is with the 2.1 trillion coming into our balance sheet, no? What will our fiscal situation look like come 2022. That is the point of the matter here. And uh, we just want to see exactly what will be the situation. You know? uh, we want to understand that also. Yeah. Uh, yes, sir, we'll take that as a take home. We'll, get, we'll provide further analysis regarding that particular fiscal question because this will have to be vetted through the DBCC. Right. Thank you, thank you, USEC. Mr. Chairman. And, um, uh, uh, sorry, sorry, Mr. Yes. Chairman, yes. just very quickly, I'm, I'm very sorry, um, Mr. Ortiz. Just to, um, without um, preempting the, the 
the sensitivity analysis to be conducted by the BSP uh, on the effects of the of the potential ODA loans uh, uh, to be uh, to be entered into between now and 2022. I think the BSP uh, and I was just reminded and I pass it on to Asik did it. Um, of the data coming from the BSP, which was presented in our roadshow in Osaka last week, which showed essentially the projections, the actual and projected um, movements of our debt to GDP ratio between uh, now and 2022. And if, 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 in fact, maybe we could flash that on the screen just for the senators. Um, um, appreciation and the committee's appreciation. The BSP is, is actually projecting a downward trend in our debt to GDP ratio in consideration of the uh, foreign loans that will be entered into under build, build, build. I think uh, we started off with a GDP to debt to GDP ratio of about 42% in uh, 2017. Uh, currently, we have reduced that already to about uh, a little below 41%. And if I'm not mistaken, according to the BSP projections, we will go down to as low as about 36% uh, by 2022. So this despite the uh, loans that will be entered into under the Build, Build, Build program of the administration. So I think, although that is a macro indicator of financial health, uh, Mr. Chairman, um, I think this is a good indicator, no? but um, of course, uh, the BSP can do more uh, micro-sensitivity analysis on the, on the overall financial health of the economy and the capability of the economy to pay up. But having said that, again, I just want to also emphasize the point of Assistant Secretary Uy no? and Batres that the main reason why our debt to GDP ratio is projected to go down is precisely because of the rapid growth of the Philippine economy. Uh, so I, I, I really take exception to the, to the comments that the economy is growing slower. No, it is not. No, there was admittedly a, um, a reduction in growth uh, in 2018 due to the problems we we had with respect to the external factors and inflation domestically. However, as we have seen now, those numbers are improving and the projections for this year is we will again increase our growth in 2019 and onwards into 2022. So finally, m Mr. Chairman, the biggest albatross of the Philippine economy is our infrastructure. That is the biggest albatross that we have. Unlike our neighboring countries in Asia, um, we have unfortunately not invested enough in the past in infrastructure. And I think the president um, and economic managers recognized this early on in the administration, and hence we have build, build, build. Um, and I think uh, we need to invest in infrastructure. Now, whether we invest through ODA, PPP, is really a matter of policy. You know? and I think, and uh, I think uh, Director Pexon can uh, address this as well, the Duterte government has in fact um, entered into several PPP projects uh, in the first half of its uh, administration. Uh, and unlike previous administrations who have openly said that we will not, for example, accept uh, unsolicited proposals, uh, the, the, the Philippine government, the, 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 the government under President Duterte has in fact not just accepted, but already processed and approved several PPP, PPP projects, including, for example, the um, Bulacan Airport, uh, for example, and has accepted also the proposal for the development of the uh, of NAIA as well as other PPP projects. In, in BCDA alone, Mr. Chairman, um, our two flagship projects, uh, the Clark International Airport expansion, as well as New Clark, the first phase of New Clark City, are both PPP projects, Mr. Chairman. So um, I think it's really just uh, a matter of, of utilizing all the best financing options available to us in order to be able to fast track, build, build, build. I think that is the main purpose of the, the main objective of the government is really to fast track and allow us to catch up because we desperately need to do so in terms of infrastructure. Thank, Thank you, you Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Vince. Uh, Mr. Ortiz. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I represent the Foundation for Economic Freedom. Just three or four points. One, by its very nature, build, build, build is ODA driven. And from past experience as head of the Philippine Assistance Program, ODA is naturally designed to be not fast. Okay. It, uh, case in point, the nine pr uh, contracts that have been signed so far took three years to be signed. That is the rule of thumb in ODA. Three years from concept to signing, another year for financing, and then you're left with one year in a six-year administration to start implementing and do the groundwork. So our appeal as a private sector uh, think tank is uh, for a new sense of urgency to take over the typical thinking of our bureaucracy. And I'm, I came from there, I respect the bureaucracy, but as you pointed out in the beginning of this session, this administration only has, it has is at its midpoint. And, it, and technically speaking, only has two years left, not three. The third year is for political grandstanding. Uh, but the, the, you only have, you, my dear bureaucrats, you only have two years to get the other, other 37 contracts to be signed, groundbroken, and uh, no, I'm all for build, 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 but you don't have the luxury of time. That is our message, number one. Um, number two, because it is ODA, it is driven by a, a faulty paradigm. The faulty paradigm of the bureaucracy is that cheapest is the best. And this is not always so. You may have the cheapest interest rate. I'll guarantee you 100% that it's tied loan from China or Japan. And therefore, you lose what you gain in cheap interest rate, you lose in terms of uh, flexibility, in terms of man maneuverability, in terms of management of the entire project. So cheapest is not always best. This is the sin of 9184, where you are all bound uh, by this no notion, that paradigm, that cheapest is best. Only go for the cheapest. Nothing else will work. That is not true. You know that? You're nodding yes. And that is our second message. Cheapest is not always the best. And this is where we urge our bu bureaucrats and uh, the Senate to uh, reconsider the thinking on uh, public, uh, private sector participation, PPP. Because in the next two years, this is the only fast track that I can, we can imagine that will work in the next two years. Yeah. Vince mentioned so many uh, unsolicited proposals. Please make them happen because you only have two years. You don't have the luxury of time. Who knows who will be the next president? Okay, so that's uh, uh, message number two. Build, build, build from the very inception is Luzon centric. 99% of the projects are in Luzon. While in the meantime, Visayas and Mindanao have been growing at 10% every year, year on year. Why is it that 90% of your projects in Build, Build, Build are in Luzon? And 90% of the 90% are in transportation. What, hap what happened to the other sectors? The reason we raise this is because recently we, we passed the Bangsamoro Organic Law. In that law, you have automatic deductions up to 100 billion pesos in the next five years. But I can only count a handful of projects in Mindanao where this can be directed at. The FEF has, co uh, has created a technical committee, an advisory group, head by a former finance secretary, Gary Tevez. There are 10 members of the group. We have a direct line to uh, Chairman Murad to, to, to teach him two things. One, administration and governance. To how to plan and implement projects in B BARMM. But we cannot take any example from Build, Build, Build because there are no projects in Build, Build, Build for Mindanao and specifically for BARM. We urge that in the next two years, we pick the low hanging fruit, one or two or three projects that will actually be implemented, financed, and uh, operated within this administration's uh, tenure. We don't have much time. So to summarize, uh, a sense of urgency. Number two, cheapest is not always the best. Three, leave some room for Mindanao. Lastly, sir, uh, 
we are concerned about the water situation. We have been following this when I was still with San Miguel. Kaliwa was my project. I've actually walked the entire length and breadth of Kaliwa River. Oh, but we were told by one of the undersecretaries who did not show up, Ruben Reynoso, that no, only government can do this. The private sector should not be involved in anything like this. So we, d we withdrew. Now Kaliwa, eight, 10 years later, is about, but Kaliwa River is only provides 550 MLD, million liters per day. It is the smallest of the riverine systems that are in that place. There's Laiban and there's Kanan. The total output of Laiban, Kaliwa, and Kanan is five billion liters per day, 5,000 MLD, with another three, three MLD uh, provided by tributary rivers, other tributary rivers. We have the potential of eight billion liters per day from the last remaining source of bulk water for Metro Manila. And yet we are developing the smallest of the small, 550 MLD. Why? I don't know. We don't know, understand the logic. But we urge our, uh, our bureaucrats to think about other water projects that will augment and supplement Kaliwa. Kaliwa is only 550 MLD. That's not even enough to cover the current crisis in Metro Manila. The current shortage is 550 MLD. We have a crisis already ongoing. We need to focus on water. I know that it passed on second reading, the creation of a Department of Water, Sanitation, and Sewage. This is something that is urgent. And uh, as a, another, another rule of thumb, if by midpoint, your bill or your draft legislation is not propon proposed by the President at the State of the Nation address in July, then it has no chance no chance of being implemented at all in the next two years. So if there are any lingering infrastructure projects that are terribly important, make sure that they are on the priority list of the president in the State of the Nation address in July. Because it will take one year to do the IRR, another year to organize, and then the, this administration has uh, run its course. It's time to, to select the next president. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ortiz. Parang may bala kayo tumakbong presidente. We have a few more resource persons. Um, UA UANP, uh, anything to share po? Andi andito ba? Yes, yes. Ayun, sir. Uh, Mr. Jerk, uh, uh, good afternoon na po pala. Ayan, so... Uh, three points lang po. Yung first point in relation to your question a while ago about the debt to GDP. So, uh, just like to provide a very simple uh, simple formula for us to understand what uh, President uh, Vince was talking about, about the projected uh, lower uh, debt to GDP ratio. But, but it's com basically, it's just composed of uh, uh, three parts. So, yung beginning balance, yung current uh, uh, debt to GDP, and then the the interest rate minus the GDP, the real GDP growth rate. So, kapag ka mas mataas yung interest rate dun sa real GDP growth rate natin, then expectedly, tataas yung uh, debt to GDP growth rate po. And then last part is the primary, uh, primary, uh, primary surplus over GDP, or primary surplus over GNP, which is a function of uh, tax collection effort and prudential uh, so, uh, and then yung last part sir is uh, yung yung, tak, yung uh, primary surplus which is uh, yung deficit natin minus the interest payment so aalisin mo yung parang net operating surplus sa mga businesses so, primary surplus as a percentage of GDP. So, uh, while I believe na yung mga projections ng BSP and NEDA in relation to a lower GDP, uh, debt to GDP ratio, it is very sensitive on the rate of the growth of our economy. So, if it's very important, yung sinasabi ni Sir Alan Ortiz na, eh, pirma, kung ano man yan, pirmahan nyo na at gawin nyo na. Kasi, uh, the rate of our GDP is closely linked to how fast we actually disburse the money 
for infrastructure. Buti na lang nung 2018, uh, the, the construction industry grew by around 15.9% in 2018. Kung hindi yun nag-grow, uh, thanks to our build, build, build team ng, uh, ng government, uh, the, the GDP growth would have been much lower. So uh, the message here is clear uh, on the, in, in the relation to the uh, debt to GDP. Whatever the interest rate, the GDP growth rate must be faster. So ang, ang conclusion yan, three, five, ten years from now, we should make sure that this infrastructure that we borrow money, money for should actually be completed as soon as possible and must be utilized as soon as possible. How many times did we borrow money for infrastructure that we did not use? So, and therefore, we pay for the interest rate and uh, the principal, hindi eh, naman natin nagamit, walang na-contribute sa, sa GDP. On the flip side, yung, op yung, yung, yung optimistic view is that if we put our acts together, our construction industry will grow by at least eight times if we put our acts together. If we don't, uh, the construction industry, as per our projections, can only grow by 86% in the next 10 years. Cumulative na po yun. So parang 8% per year for the next 10 years. But if we put our acts together using the same government parameters of NEDA, DOF, and DBM, DBCC, yung 4 to 7% uh, disbursement rate to GDP ng public infrastructure, uh, etc., etc. So we estimate that the total for the whole construction industry between 2020 to 2030 is roughly around 130 trillion. So, pero pag hindi natin gagawin ng tama yung mga construction natin, nasa mga 40 trillion lang po tayo. So, that's, uh, that's the roadmap that we are trying to, to prepare uh, with the Department of uh, Trade and Industry and uh, several, uh, together with the other agencies of government, but led by the D DTI, Construction Industry Authority of the Philippines. It will be launched, the, the, the broad strokes will be launched on March 28. So, incorporating these recommend key recommendations that we need to put together in order to harvest that particular potential of 130 trillion. Uh, and so it's anchored on four pillars, uh, if you indulge me, uh, uh, Mr. Chair. It's anchored on four pillars, uh, benchmark on other countries like Malaysia, UK, etc. So uh, sustainability, productivity, globalization, and institutions. But in essence, uh, ang, ang message natin ay the build, build, build is working, but we need to institutionalize and, if possible, legislate build, build, build. In what sense? That this 5% of GDP uh, allocation for budget and disbursement must be continued beyond the Duterte administration. Paano kung iba na po yung presidente? mag-aallocate pa rin po ba tayo ng 5% ng GDP natin sa budget for public infrastructure? O baka sumemplang ulit tayo just like in any, uh, just like in past administration? So, actually, hindi pa natin nare-reach uh, the, the DBM has allocated more than 5%, but for the 2018 report of PSA, we have only reached 4.2%. So, ibig sabihin, hindi po natin nagastos yung budget. Considering that we are already growing at more than 40% ng public infrastructure disbursement. So, ibig sabihin po, hindi na nga natin nagagastos pa yung public funds na yan for infrastructure at the budget that was uh, allocated. Nagkakaproblema na tayo sa supply of workers, etc., etc. What more, Mr. Chair, kung ma-procure ma natin ang lahat yan. Walang right of way problem, procurement problems, etc., etc. So, so, kung ma-legislate ma po natin na sana bago matapos si Duterte, ma-legislate natin na dapat at least 5% lagi dapat ang budget for infrastructure. Then, number two, kailangan, is possible, ma-put together natin yan sa isang 30-year master plan. Ka para, alam po natin kung ano yung direction, hindi po yung laging every six years, nire-review natin. Ang infrastructure po kasi, ang 
period niyan, 15 to 25 years. If we're talking about utility projects, water projects, ang impact niyan, 25 to 50 years. So we need to craft at least a 30-year master plan and legislate it. Third, yung sinasabi po yung pinag-aawayan na ODA and PPP and GAA, we must have a clear objective criteria in evaluating and classifying our big ticket projects, whether it's ODA, PPP, or GAA. So, uh, ngayon po, every, every administration po yun. So, kung ano po yung magiging priority po nung administration, yun po yung mangyayari. Pero, uh, from a think tank point of view, uh, malinaw po sa amin yun. Kapag ka ODA, yun yung mga talagang medyo risky ang financials. Pero kung bakit naman natin iyo ODA yan o GAA kung kaya ng PPP. Kung talagang on, let them lose their share and it's actually financially viable, uh, profitable. So, wala pong ganun batas na objectively classifying our big ticket projects na ODA, PPP. Ang, ang suggestion ko nga po ay dahil suggestion po ng group na mga in-interview in namin, total hindi pa po na isasabatas yung dating naunsyaming PPP law. Ayan, si Executive Director Pexon would, I think, would suppo I suppose would still uh, uh, insist that on the next Congress. So, incorporate na po natin yung doon na dapat meron tayong objective uh, uh, objective criteria. And then, uh, yung portions po noon, as we move towards the development of our construction industry. Ang pinag-uusapan po kasi natin dito, ang private sector construction industry is at least 2.7 times the public infrastructure. Ibig sabihin po, kapag gagagawin po ng maayos ng gobyerno ang infrastructure, mga roads leading, leading to rural areas, yung, public cons yung private construction, yung mga businesses, buildings, etc., will flourish at a much greater speed than what we provide them. Ibig sabihin po, kapag ka mas mabilis natin ma-provide yung public infrastructure, grabe po ang ilalago ng ekonomiya natin. Kapag ka binilisan po ng public sector yung kanilang disbursement. Kaya po, ang magiging implication nun, mauubusan po tayo ng workers. So, kukulangin po ng workers natin. At least we need 7 million workers uh, yearly if we are to take construction uh, industry seriously. Right now po, 4 million ang uh, employees ng construction industry. We will need at least 7 million for that 40 trillion worth of construction projects, both private and public. San po natin kukunin yung 7 million na yun? Eh, papano kung tumag pumata, pumalo pa po ng 130 trillion yung mga worth of projects natin? Ang estimate namin, kakailanganin natin ng 30 million na workers. Eh, ang labor force natin, 42 million. So, hindi po natin <laughs> construction industry na lang. So, therefore, we need to really institute as early as now uh, laws that will actually promote the, 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 the modernization, digitization, upscaling of uh, our workers and the tools that they are using. Para yung 7 million pa rin, we estimate with the role of technology and digitization, modernization, the same 7 million can, can provide, with the new set of skills, can provide the 130 trillion of worth of projects. So, if we are to put our acts together and then ensure, ensure this uh, worker's dignity, business, uh, the, business the, the welfare of the businesses, and make sure that the build, build, build go beyond, uh, goes beyond the Duterte administration. So we will have a very, very productive construction industry. And why is this important? Because construction industry is the second largest uh, multiplier impact to the economy, second to, to manufacturing. So ang multiplier impact ng uh, construction is 2.05. For every one peso spending on construction, you generate for the economy 2.05 pesos uh, compared to manufacturing na 2.5. Pero kung hindi po natin alagaan yung construction, pati yung multiplier ni manufacturing, ni agriculture, ni real estate, 
tsaka ni tourism cannot be actualized if you have poor and weak structures and infrastructure. So, uh, so moving forward, uh, uh, I would just like to share now, there is this document, uh, uh, a very simple document that actually uh, put together some of these recommendations and uh, together with uh, the Department of Trade and Industry, Construction Industry Authority of the Philippines, together with all these agents, nakikita ko po silang lahat. Uh, between now up to this, between that launch, March 28, up to November 28 of this year, we wish to put together several action plans para iba't iba po, legislation action plans, isasubmit po namin sa inyo yun para mag-synchronize po dun sa ilang efforts ninyo. Tapos sa uh, skills workers, upgrading, uh, action plan, pati po yung restructuring ng Department of Trade Indust and Industry, Construction Industry Authority of the Philippines. Maging, ano, kasi yung sa build, 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 parang laging nakakalimutan si DTI. Pero importante yung si DTI kasi to ensure quality of the structures, tsaka yung training, nandun na rin po si TESDA. So, isasabit po namin yan sa inyo, Mr. Chair. At uh, ang pangalan, ang working title po ngayon no, na ilo-launch sa March 28 ay Tatag, Tatag at Tapat 2030 para, para sa pamilyang Pilipinong may matatag, panatag at maginhawang buhay as defined in our ambition natin 2040. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Um, yung uh, whether ODA or PPP, that's a very long discussion. We'll have siguro a separate hearing on that, no? And uh, we also want to conduct another hearing. In fact, I have some proposals to further liberalize the construction industry. We'll invite you to share some thought on uh, that proposal. Um, next is, uh, since skills yung pinag-uusapan nyo, uh, TESDA is also here. Uh, sir, uh, any, any comments po? And let's limit it to uh, only a few minutes dahil uh, we're running against time also. Uh, yes, thank you, Chairman. I think we only have uh, this to share, that we received a directive from the President to actually immediately train the skilled workers for deployment in the Build, Build, Build project. And in response to such directive, uh, the, uh, the Director General actually issued a, an order or a directive to the regional directors to, number one, conduct an inventory of the graduates since TESDA produced around 234,546 graduates in 2018 alone. So we'll be conducting an inventory of said graduates. And second, the regional directors are also directed to coordinate with the LGUs, the DPWH, DOTR, and construction companies to determine the requirements and possible areas of cooperation to ensure the employment of the above graduates. In a recent uh, speaking engagement of the president, he made a comment that uh, there's a big uh, job skills mismatch no? in the uh, construction industry, particularly for the Build, Build, Build program. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, he nag headlines yun eh, I, I remember. So uh, meaning we have a, no, a, 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 a massive infrastructure program, mm -hmm. but we don't have the skills to provide that program. In fact, as simple as yung mga driver ng, ng uh, bako, driver ng pison, nagkakaubusan na raw ngayon. No? Yes, sir. So, uh, I would like you to take a look at that, no? Because we have to support all of this uh, skilled uh, labor to the Build, Build, Build program. Because yes, if you don't have the inputs um, in absorptive capacity natin, bababa. Ba. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, uh, we'll, we'll talk about that later on, no? Yeah. Okay, your honor. Uh, next is Freedom from Debt Coalition, uh, Professor uh, Ofrenio. Okay, magandang tahanin po, uh, Mr. Chairman. Binasa uh, po namin yung inyong resolution. I think napakagandang resolution. Pero parang kulang ang mga nasagap natin information this morning bilang katugunan sa paghahanap nyo na Nasa Constitution na din na tungkulin ng Estado na mag-develop na isang self-reliant, independent, just, and equitable social and economic order. At uh, tumutugon ba yung BBB at mga utang kaugnay nito? 
doon sa sinasabi ng Constitution. Now, yung pong huling tanong nyo, meron po kaming statement pero hindi ko nababasahin dito. Bibigay ko na lang sa inyo. Ang title po nito is, Are We Building Another Debt Bomb? And, uh, and partly this uh, related sa last question po nyo. By 2022, ang fiscal situation ba ng Pilipinas, siguro mas higit doon, ang susunod bang administration, ang fiscal situation ay tutugma doon sa uh, resulta nito mga BBB at kakayanan natin magbayad sa utang. Uh, meron tayong concept ng debt sustainability. Uh, ibig sabihin naman hindi, hindi tayo uutang, kundi uutang tayo pero kinakilang lalago ang ekonomiya sa isang sitwasyon na kaya niyang uh, i-manage, i-bayaran ang, ang utang. This reminds me, Mr. Chairman, noong 1970s, uh, uh, nasa Department of Labor ako no 1976-77, researcher, writer, we were asking ourselves, are we worrying too much and too, uh, too fast? Because noong po 1972, ang utang ng Pilipinas, uh, panlabas 2.7 billion dollars, pero nang idineclare ang martial law, the World Bank declared the Philippines as an area of concentration and immediately the World Bank and the IMF together with our technocrats, they formed the consultative group of creditor countries for the Philippines. And through them, bumaha ang utang uh, in support of infrastructure. So hindi ho bago itong BBB. We had this uh, episode of BBB uh, uh, nung at yung sinasabi yung 5% uh, uh, spending or even more uh, of the GDP in support of infrastructures, eh, ginawa na po yun noong 1970. So, nagdoble ang utang natin noong 1976 to 6.7 billion in just four years. And then pagdating na 1980, 17.2 billion dollars. However, pagdating ng early 80s, uh, nagkaroon tayo ng oil price crisis, nag uh, bumagsak ang mga commodity, sugar, etc., at nagmature ang uh, some of these uh, medium-term loans. Doon po nagsimulang lumubulalo ang utang sapagkat na we engaged into short-term compensatory borrowing. Nagkaroon pa ng capital flight, umalis si Derby if you recall. So, pagdating na 1983, pinatay si Ninoy Aquino, sumabog na yung utang. The, the, by that time, ang utang ay 24 or 25 billion dollars already at the uh, the government was supposed to set up a set separate central bank dito sa Binondo, headed by uh, Bobby Ongpin. And dahil hindi uh, patay na yung mga letters of credit, we were forced to engage into barter trade, uh, if you will recall. And bumagsak ang peso, it was a terrible uh, period. So by 1986, uh, uh, $27 billion na ang utang. Now, the reason why we are catching up, Mr. Chairman, it was through build, 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 it was uh, infrastructure development because decade of the 80s, decade of the 90s, and decades of the 2000s are decades of fiscal aust austerity because we were forced to uh, pay for the debt that exploded uh, along 1983 and then uh, we were under the supervision of the IMF, the world. This, this brings me to your very good question. Uh, and about fiscal situation, it is very much related sa kaya ba lumago na ekonomiya. Magaganda ang sinasabi ng mga kasama na lalago, lalago. But there are threats to the economy today, Mr. Chairman. Our agriculture sector is down, less than 10% of the GDP. Umikot ho kayo, rice is down, palay. Coconut is down, sugar is down. Corn is down, abaca is down, even tobacco is down. That's more than 90% of the agricultural land of this country. And the farmers, I'm not joking like banana and pineapple. So, now, ano po yung ating growth? Well, call center BPO. But in 2017, sinabi na po ni Secretary Peña, it's in a plateau. Now, we all know the fourth industrial revolution. You have the chatbots, you have the DIY, 
you have this software uh, robotization, uh, automation. Now, how about migration? That, yeah, alam po natin, yung lifesaver natin. You see, as sabi po ng MEDA, consumption-led economy is precisely because of the remittances of our overseas uh, workers. But since 2017, ang record po ng, ng DOLE, ng PUA, again, nag-plateau, e e even nag-decline. And we all know what's happening globally. Yung uh, xenophobia, yung crisis, yung crisis ng migration sa US at sa Europe. So, ano po pag-asa natin? Mabuti na lang itong si DTI Secretary uh, uh, Lopez. Uh, medyo nang galing sa nationalist, mayroong kaunting nationalist background. Uh, Pinupus niya yung go negosyo at saka itong, uh, uh, itong manufacturing resurgence. Unfortunately... Professor, let's uh, go straight to the point. Yeah. And, uh, no, but uh, what I'm time. pointing out, yung, yung growth ng economy, eh baka hindi ho possibly in the next uh, few years, Na, dapat sasabay yung pangungutang mo sa pag-grow ng economy at yung manufacturing resurgence nakasalalay ngayon dito sa ano, scaling the global value chains eh, global value chains po na Pilipinas nakatali rin sa tinatamaan din ng fourth industrial revolution just recently tinigil ng isuso ang pag-manufacture ng uh, crosswinds at saka D-Max eh, yun po ang isang vehicle ng Pilipinas na napakalas, napakalaki ng local content. So we have to address this. There are many other issues. Uh, I will skip them, but doon do sa isang issue nung sa sinabi ni Mr. Ortiz yung sa Kaliwa Dam. Yung Kaliwa Dam, Kanan Dam, yung Laibang Dam, isang area po yan, Infanta Nakar. Now, ang isang issue po yan ng mga CSO ay bakit yung mga uh, dumagat remontado hindi man lang na Nakausap na maayos yung sinatawag ng uh, UN Free Friar in Informed Consent. Wala. Kasi kung nakaroon sana ng pag-secure nitong Free Friar in Informed Consent, lalabas at lalabas po yung isang katotohanan na yung Infanta, na, Infanta Nakar ay isang active earthquake. Naka, naka, yung po mga yan, naka, nakatuntong sa isang active earthquake fault. Ang China po, Sa paghigpit nila sa loob ng China, sinasabi po nila, hindi pwede magtayo ng dam sa isang area na, hin na hindi tinama, makapagtatayo lang sa isang area na hindi tinama ng earthquake for the last 180,000 years. In, our, in the case of Infantan Nakar, it is on record, there was a violent earthquake that hit the area in, two, in 1910. And... Uh, so, it bakit hindi po kan? Ngayon may ang suggestion po ng ilang expert natin sa water. Nariyan naman ang Wawa Dam. Puno po ng tubig, bakit hindi develop? Nariyan naman ang Laguna Lake. Bakit hindi itreat ang water dyan? Iayos ang lake, katulad ng ginawa pag-aayos sa Boracay. And this... Uh, these are easily doable at pwedeng maging source ng water na sinasabi ni Mr. Ortiz na kailangan-kailangan ng Metro Manila. What I'm saying in conclusion, uh, Mr. Chairman, napakaganda po nitong ginagawa niya. How do we rethink? Huwag na bang porkin na isulat nyo na ito ng 2016-17 ang mga flagship programs, etc. ay mga borrowing. Eh, hindi na tayo mag-a-adjust. Remember, the economy now is facing those threats that I already mentioned. And uh, we need to adjust on the basis of uh, new knowledge. And so, and above all, in line with your resolution, we have to develop a pro-poor, pro-people, inclusive infra-development. Can we transform the public-private partnership into a public-poor partnership, public-community partnership? Bakit, uh, bakit lang eh, ang kausap lang ng PPP ay yung isang dosen ng mga malalaking korporasyon? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Right, thank you. Thank you, Professor. We'll take note of your... Uh, Everything po na sinabi niya will be uh, official, so we'll take note of your um, uh, reactions po. DBM, any any comments? Ano kayong comments? Attorney uh, Larsha, sir. Lar Lar Larsha. Uh, sir, just a quick uh, clarification on the 4.7 uh, budget for infrastructure. That 4.7 is cash-based, and the government intends to wrap it up to 7% by 2022. 
now it's it only goes to show that the government that infrastructure remains to be the top priority uh, followed by social services so and that's uh, that's because of the uh, rippling effect of the build 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 uh, it the build 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 it is estimated to generate around 1.1 million direct and indirect jobs annually so like what sir has said, uh, if we get our acts together, then we could, this could be uh, impetus to uh, further economic growth. Thank you, thank you. Um, actually, I was hoping that um, uh, the NEDA or BSP will have that uh, stress test slash simulation study on the, um, the additional ODA coming into uh, our balance sheet, no? vis-a-vis -vis the debt-to-GDP ratio and other indicators that will uh, point out our fiscal situation by 2020. Uh, we did a very simple, ito very simple lang to, no? na tabletop uh, computation to include the 2.1 trillion uh, pesos um, ODA. Uh, lumalabas, it's about 48.3% debt to GDP. No? This is uh, tabletop lang to. No? Uh, we, we, I know we have a lot of assumptions that we need to, uh, to, um, uh, to, to uh, figure out. But uh, this is what I'm saying. No? If we're uh, going to carry about 2.1 trillion and push our debt to GDP to 483 uh, there's a psychological threshold of 50% na malapit na malapit na tayo. No? Um, so we need to understand all of this and I was actually hoping that uh, sana in this hearing we will get that. But um, I would like to urge um, again NEDA, DOF, and BSP to uh, help us understand no, our fiscal situation moving forward. No? Especially uh, in the years to come. No? So uh, maraming assumptions yan, I know, and uh, we need your your um, experience to put that together. No? Mr. Chair, may yes. I just clarify that in the case of BSP, when we make our stress tests, we would normally look at the factors such as exchange rate yes. or GDP, but we actually, and we only cover external debt, so we don't cover the entire, I including domestic debt, which uh, the OF has. So, and then they, also they are also the ones looking at the impact on the fiscal side. Correct. I understand that. So, but uh, I, I think the most important departments here will be NEDA and DOF. And um, aside from the actual ODA that will be incurred, it's also the fiscal situation of our nation that is uh, quite important to us. And uh, we'd like to urge you to um, put your heads together and compute that, no? run a simulation. Uh, a a any last words before we terminate, uh, Vince? Mr. Chairman, just very briefly, uh, just uh, on behalf of the uh, the government, we, we just want to respond maybe to uh, the three points raised by the distinguished fellow from the FEF earlier with the indulgence of our colleagues here. First of all, I think uh, most important, you know, build, build, build is not Luzon-centric. I think the, uh, and uh, maybe we can ask Neda to get into the details, but it is absolutely false to say that 90% of the build, build, build projects are in Luzon. That is just not true. No, and we will, uh, uh, we, will, we, we will just ask NEDA to maybe provide with the actual list of projects throughout the country, Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. Second, um, ODA is not necessarily slow. It may have been slow in the past, but just to prove a point, uh, 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 since our, our colleagues from the DOT are, are not present, we just started construction, the national government through the DOTR just started construction on two major ODA projects just in the last few months, in the last few weeks, sorry. The uh, North-South Commuter Rail, which was previously called North Rail, uh, which was ground broke in February, uh, awarded under a JICA ODA loan. And just very recently, a few days ago, a project which many people 
in the past thought was impossible, just ground broke. The, the Metro Manila subway, again, as funded by, the, by JICA. So, and this is only during the first half of the term of the president. And according to the DOTR, the North-South commuter rail will reach uh, Clark International Airport by 2022, while the subway will have three stations operational by 2022. So I, I think, you know, you know um, maybe in the past there were some issues, but under the present administration, under Build, 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 we are really trying to move as fast as we can, and the results are already uh, being seen at this first half of the Duterte, Duterte administration. And thirdly, I think, with respect to PPP, again, we would like to reiterate, you know, government's priority is to fast track build, 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 and to utilize all available options uh, in order to make build, build, build happen as fast as possible. Uh, this includes PPP, like I said earlier, and as um, emphasized by Director Pexon and uh, Assistant Secretary Uy, PPP projects under this administration are in fact uh, moving faster than they were in the past. Um, but we are not limited to that. We also want to find other sources of both financing and implementation that will allow us to really catch up and implement build, build, build faster. So just to put those on the record, um, Mr. Chairman, in order to clarify the points raised earlier. Thank you, uh, Vince. Uh, my, my own personal takeaway from this hearing is really is really the practice of greater transparency. I, I think uh, doon tayo nagkukulang eh, pagdating dito sa build, build, build na ito. B both in the methodology, both in the uh, evaluation of the projects as well as the loans, and both making the public understand and appreciate what is happening behind the build, build, build. What is happening, I went through the website of the Build, Build, Build. It's fantastic. Alagang may engaño ka. But these are the things na gusto lang natin ipakita. Pero yung ayaw natin ipakita, hindi natin linalabas. O may meron konti tayong hesitation na ipakita. No? That's why I went through the websites of NEDA, went through the websites of the OF, I even went through the websites of the SP over the weekend. No? Uh, hindi na ho ako nag uh, over the weekend para just to go through the website, just to understand. I'm putting myself in the shoes of a common person who wants to understand not only the projects, but how the projects came about, how the loans were evaluated, what are the thought process uh, that went through this uh, trend to these loans. No? So, yun ang nawawala. And that's why I want to urge um, NEDA and DOF to really practice greater transparency. I know there is an FOI uh, directive, but it doesn't bar us from practicing the greater transparency beyond what the F FOI requires. No? And this is to really make the public appreciate that everything being done here is to the greater interest of our constituents. Yung po nakukuha ko, that's why uh, this is a great good exercise because it gave me uh, some uh, an opportunity to go through how government practices its uh, transparency efforts. No? And uh, that is my, uh, I'm urging the departments to do that. Of course, I am not going to put a timetable, but uh, sisingilin ko na lang kayo come budget season. No? I, alam nyo naman, babalik kayo dito come budget season. So, uh, tatanungin ko na lang kayo doon uh, if you have any reforms in terms of transparency. But uh, with that, um, uh, I would like to request some documents. Uh, we sent DOF a letter requesting a summary no, of the loan agreements. No? Not uh, exactly the loan agreements, but the summary of the loan agreements. But I would like to supplement that request. No? Send us this, the loan agreements itself. No? So it's total nine lang naman to eh, no? um, uh, In my letter, I requested for a summary because wala na kami time eh. We were racing against time. But since uh, we have now ample time, I would like to understand the loan agreements. And this is uh, for purposes of evaluating you know, uh, what went through the uh, negotiation process. Uh, at the same time, uh, yung request ng mga 
uh, civil society organizations natin in simulation to the debt to GDP ratio. Uh, we like to request uh, NEDA and also DOF to simulate. Uh, it will give us a comfort level that uh, this new track of undertaking DOF uh, ODA uh, is still um, uh, within our uh, within the uh, the new track is uh, will not impact our fiscal situation no? now and beyond. No? And uh, I think the confidence level is uh, quite important. And also the position papers of everyone. See, uh, Professor uh, Urfenio has a position paper. So if you have a position paper, please uh, send your position papers to us, uh, hopefully on or before March 12. You know. um, the outcome of this uh, hearing will be a resolution or a committee report uh, um, detailing what we have uh, uh, identified and what we have concluded. Um, it will also depend on the submissions by the departments. No? Uh, if need be, uh, we might have another hearing also, if need be, uh, depending on the position paper. So with that, any, any last words po from, uh, from our uh, resource persons? Kung wala naman po, thank you very much for your time. Uh, Mr. Ortiz, any? Uh, something you are familiar with, power. Uh, 2018, we had a surplus of 1,000 megawatts in Mindanao. We had uh, 100 megawatts in the Visayas and 2,000 megawatts in Luzon. That has declined considerably by 10% this year. So the power surplus that we have enjoyed in the last two years will disappear by 2021. So there will be a convergence of new projects requiring new power demands, but a declining power surplus. So we need to start building power plants this year and next year in order to stave off a decline in productivity due to power shortages. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ortiz. Uh, again, thank you very much for your time and uh, thank you very much for participating. If you notice also, we invited everyone on the table, the civil service organization, so that we will get a full view you know, of um, the uh, full view and also the full opinion on the Build, Build, Build program. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Meeting is adjourned. <laughs>